going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a real special guest in the building. Listen, I've known this gentleman for the past uh, almost 30 years from I got in this business. I knew him first as an artist. He was rapping in Jamaica. Then I knew him as a soul man, and then I knew him as a promoter. You know we have in the building today? We have Freddy in the building today. What's going on, Big Boss? Nothing much more than life itself. It's a pleasure, it's an honor to sit down across from you. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Somebody like you, I would say it's my pleasure, Freddie, because as I said, I heard the records, met you in person, you took care of me from back then. I said, you know what? Now is my opportunity to return back the favor. That's why we're sitting now and having this conversation today. Respect, man. You know what and I mean? It was a pleasure when I got the message from you first and then I call you and we spoke on the phone I was like mm-hmm. yeah anytime yeah. man it's Let's be a pleasure because I've been watching all the podcasts you know so mm-hmm. it's an honor to be sitting right here respect so much right now we're at the tail end of the pandemic how has it been treating you for the past probably year and a half to be honest with you my line of work that mm-hmm. I'm in now the pandemic has not affected it mm-hmm. It more so we just got extremely busy you know, busy to the mm-hmm. point where they have to be hiring people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. you know, mentally, just like everybody else, mm-hmm. you know, you have a little stressful days and you just, for someone like me who love music to my core, mm-hmm. you know, you just want to go out, stand up somewhere where you hear some bass just mm-hmm. moving you and some nice music, enjoying friends and families, you know. Mm-hmm. But there is not much we can do but just abide by the laws and the rules that they have in place mm-hmm. and just know that you're taking care of yourself and your family and with God's blessing everything will work out you know you totally understand especially somebody that's been around and seen so much you totally get it because it's been a stress but it's been a blessing at the same it's just really you have to know how to navigate in these times right here yeah you have to know how to navigate mm-hmm. because if you lose your navigational compass You know, you don't know where you're going to end up. Or you might end up in a spot or a place Mm -hmm. that you you regret it. For sure. So you have to just know, say, this is the card that was dealt to mankind Mm -hmm. in this time. So what am I going to do? How am I going to handle this game? You know, Mm -hmm. just... I say this pandemic should teach everyone to be more loving to each other. You know? Because when I look at somebody like Father Ramsey, mm-hmm. you know, and the outpouring mm-hmm. of love that I saw for this man, mm-hmm. that I met the first time, my first trip to Canada, I met this man. And we've stayed friends since, you know. The pandemic just brought it r- the realness to the music fraternity, mm-hmm. you know. Because of music, let me meet him. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So everybody after us know, say, play them part, stay healthy, stay safe, mm-hmm. and just be a hand to your brother out there. You know? You understand? Yeah, man. You get it. Generally, want to get that out of the way, but on this program here, we like to take it from the beginning and then bring it up right now, right now. My first question for you is this. Where did you grow up in Jamaica? And what type of child were you then? I was a mama's boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was born 1968. Hmm. So if, if anybody want to do the maths, yeah. this year I'm 53 years old. Yeah. I was born Devon Basil Henry in a little place called Magaragoli, mm-hmm. Vineyard Town. Okay. In Kingston. You know, I grew up there. But in 19, the latter part of 1979, we moved from there to a place called Franklin Town, mm. a.k.a. Dunkirk, mm. right? So that's where I, 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 I spend most of my, what did I say, pre-teenage years going into being a teenager to mm-hmm. a young man in Dunkirk. Dunkirk, there. Yeah. And what interested you in music in the first place? What was that initial spark for you to say, hey, I like this here? Well, from, from I was a baby, you know, mm-hmm. I know my father playing music. My father had one of those turntables where you could stack six or seven 45s. Mm -hmm. And when one is done playing, Mm -hmm. the needle will move and another one drop down. Mm -hmm. 
and you have him look at speaker box them and you know him look at microphone and them days it was two bumps. Yes. When the bass go boop, 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 you see the light <laughs> dim in at the two bump, you know? So the spark was from then. Mm-hmm. You know? The spark was from then, just seeing my father. And my father was that man who loved dance. Okay. Him and my mother, them play them music and them dance. Mm-hmm. You know? So I think that's where I got the dancing thing from to lead me into doing break dancing and spin by my head and all them something. <laughs> okay, so uh, originally, because I know you were rapping, we're gonna get there just now. So you were also break dancing too. Yeah, that's yeah. where the, that's when that's where the rapping came from. Because mm. I was a break dancer. Yeah, we were in a crew called Fresh Punks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, and we were pretty good. Mm. We did many talent shows right across the British Jamaica. Mm. Yeah, man, Montego Bay, Negril, Clarendon, wherever they... You have this fellow in Vineyard Town, it's called, his name is Eglan. Mm-hmm. He, he used to keep a lot of talent shows. And we were all over dancing. We used to have our cardboards, we taped together, and we roll it up, and we walk over the cardboard, mm-hmm. our boombox with cassette player. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was our pastime. Crazy. Was there any other notable names in this group here? Ah, oh, notable names in that group. Actually, no, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. well, my friend Van Wayne, mm-hmm. you know, me, me call him my brother. Yeah. Everybody do, in the world know him as Wayne Wanda. Mm-hmm. Wayne Wanda used to dance this cut too. Okay. But he never <laughs> in, in it deep like oh me used to in it deep because yeah. Wayne is from a home where a Christian home. Got you. Wayne Wanda, his mother and father, my Relig- really religious people. Mm-hmm. So he had his, you know, they, they're lenient with him because he was the second eldest, mm-hmm. you know. So he could have do certain little things, but when it come to, you know, that's a roof by a road, no. Mm-hmm. My parents are more lenient with me, but me know I'm a cut off time. Yeah. You understand what I mean? <laughs> Crazy. Okay, so you're breakdancing, doing your stuff there. What got you interested in? Rapping at this time here because in Jamaica it's you it's dance hall and stuff reggae rock steady ska and all this stuff they're playing so where did you start to hear the rap and hip hop and stuff that got you interested in something like that? Well, being a, a break dancer, mm-hmm. we used to listen to all them rap battle songs mm-hmm. that was infiltrated in Jamaica back then, mm-hmm. and you always have other crews. From the same neighborhood and other crews where we used to square off and, you know, mm-hmm. we were watching our Boogie Down production and yes. all them, them movies, you know. And listening to Run DMC and back in the days, you know, you listen to all them rappers, you know, um, Cool Works and all mm-hmm. these guys. It was fascinated to me because I was like, wow, this sound good. And, mm-hmm. you know, and because I have my sisters who were living in the U.S., they must always send all these Cassette tapes. Okay. For me, you know, I'll talk to them on the phone. And I'm like, oh, can I get this? Can I get that? You know, and they used to send it. And I, mean, I listen to all these rapping. I'm picking up the slangs and, you know, that's where it started, you know. Mm-hmm. The, okay, so breakdancing now led to hip hop, led to breakdancing. And then I guess that led to you emceeing. And then what was your first thing into music? What was the first thing you did to get into the music business besides dancing now? The first thing was... Learning from my father how to string up a sound system. Okay. My father took a calendar and drew the back, the mm-hmm. amps, everything, which wire going to what port and all these things, and said, study this. Mm-hmm. You can't love music. I want to be a selector. You can't string up a sound. For sure. Right? I learned from string up my father little sound. Mm-hmm. My father had a best friend, right? Mr. Ross. We call him Uncle Bertie. Mm-hmm. He had a sound in the neighborhood. It was called Cintiq. Yeah. But he changed the name because his last name is Ross. He changed the name of the song to Big R. Mm. Right? Back then, Delano from Renaissance, I know Delano, Deloti from Delo Aboy, I do stunt riding, BMX bicycle and all these things. What? Delano Thomas. Yeah. Delano Thomas' dad, mm-hmm. Mr. Thomas, we used to mm. call him Uncle Tito. Yeah. He used to do the maintenance for the song. Mm. So, the song had three selectors, but they were like older guys, you know? Yeah. And 
the owner always say, he want fresh blood. Fresh blood, flesh blood. So my father keep telling him, why my boy bad, you know? My boy no music. Hmm. And him say, you know what, I'm going to give him a try out one of them Friday night. Because on Friday night, Big R was the spot in Dunkirk. Yeah. If you're not going to Big R on a Friday night, yeah. you're not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> so I get my yeah. look around, and he was impressed. And him say, you are the new man on the sound. Okay. So that's how I got into the sound business now mm-hmm. and start playing alongside other sounds and start getting to know people. And the first selector I got to know from that little introduction was Captain Midnight. Was Midnight? Yes, man. What song was Midnight playing at that time there? Midnight, there was a big selector from Super Saint, man. Mm. The man with the golden voice, mm. warm mm. and easy, all the ladies. The man, he was the man. Yeah. But you know what, like a, like a rewind. I should have said the first selector. The f- the first selector from a big sound with a big impact on my life mm-hmm. was Captain Richie. Richie, yes, yes, Captain yes. Richie is from Franklin Town, you know, okay. from Dunkirk. You know. mm-hmm. And Richie is one of the man them who used to steer me off of the corner. Mm-hmm. I say, yo, you love music, man. Play a sound. Come off of the corner. Do this. And I used to listen to Richie. But in terms of the music aspect and learning certain things, mm-hmm. at midnight, yeah, we were playing the song one day, and he was living in Spanish Town, I think, and he moved to Franklin Town, mm-hmm. and he was passing by and hearing the song. Yeah. And he came in to the back of the bar, the other lawn, a big open space, and he said, my name is so-and-so, you know, super saint. And I said, what? And he said, why the song, you know, sound good, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, string up good. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's how we, we met. Yeah. And he just start helping you out from there. And we became friends, friends up to this day. Yeah. Midnight, a eh? big, big, big. Because when it comes to sound business and when it comes to names, Midnight is one of those names that stand predominant to this day. Yep. You understand? Yeah, man. Captain Midnight. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you guys are juggling. You met Midnight and stuff. Uh, at this time here, what year are we talking about that you joined now, Big R? I drove Giant Big R in 1987. 87. I graduated from school in 1986, mm-hmm. and I was on the sound the next year. Was there any artist, or was it, what type of sound was it at this time here? It was a, it was, what did I say? It was what Stone Love is now, it was back then. Mm-hmm. Because we used to play the reggae, you know, and because the boss, the owner used to travel a lot. Mm-hmm. I used to talk to my Sister, them abroad, and when them tell me, say, like, salt and pepper hot and this group hot, I tell him. Mm. So when him travel, him buy the records. Mm. Him buy the 12-inch or the album, them time. Well, a vinyl, we are talking about. Of course. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and him bring them down, and we are play R&B, we are play hip-hop, we are play reggae, we are play soca, we are play slow music. So we were a song, we just play all kind of genre music. Mm-hmm. Right across the board. Okay, this is yeah. 87, you're doing your stuff here. What were some, do you remember any notable dances this time while on Big R? Well, Big R, the, 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 one of the problems I would say with the boss was mm-hmm. because he had his own venue, him, him not taking a date, mm-hmm. per se. Yeah. You know, Friday night, Saturday night, in place rum, mm-hmm. cock. And he used to cut the whole heap of dub plate. Okay. When we, when we say cut dub, I don't talk cut dubs. Mm-hmm. Right? When we go to King Toby's studio, mm-hmm. and we are cut tune, mm-hmm. I used to say, why am I cut all this tune? But him am not, it's not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. and he'll play for his friends, you know. Yeah. Like, I could play a Portmore, play a country, but for people that he knows. Got you. You know. And to be honest with you, that was one of the, the reasons why I, I chose to make the transition from that sound to another sound. Okay. So then let's get there now. Because how long were you on Big R for? Ooh, I was there for up until about 1989. Okay. So you did a good two years over yeah. there. Yeah. All right. And then the transition, where did you go from there? A sound from Washington, D.C., D.C.? Yeah, moved yeah. to Jamaica. Mm-hmm. A song called King Bebo. Mm. And the boss does hire me. Yeah. And I was on that song with Tigo, you know, who went on to play Conquering Lion for a while. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. rest in peace, Tigo. Mm-hmm. You know, but King Bebo was the sound that put me out there in terms of playing against some big song. Let's get into that, dear. <laughs> you know what I mean? What were some of your big nights on this King Bebo song? Now? My first big dance was, mm-hmm. there was a piece, a, 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 a political thing, PMP mm-hmm. thing, because Fra- um, Franklin, Donald Dunkirk, no, it's a PMP constituency. Mm-hmm. And they had some gang violence was going on in the neighborhood, so they had a peace dance. Okay. And it was King Bebo and Metro Media. Mm. <laughs> with the great, great sky juice. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, mm-hmm. I was kind of nervous still. For sure. Because when you're playing a big zone, and I'm talking King B or big zone with, in terms of equipment, yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you're going to string up against the great Metro Media. You know? And I'm looking at the sound system and I'm looking at Father Metro and, and I'm like, yeah. And then when I saw sky juice now, mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa. The man. It's real. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he had on his, his marina, you know, wife beater. Mm-hmm. And you know, we were chain them mm-hmm. and him belly up there and <laughs> the man him rug over him shoulder. Yeah. Him signature that, you know. And I'm like, damn. Mm-hmm. Sh- me, 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 me not gonna manage this. You know? Mm-hmm. But them telling me, I'm waiting one day. Oh, me say, my brother, we're not saying, yo, not make sky juice because them have dub and you have dub too. Yeah. And I say, you know what, you're right, you know. And I'm telling you, that night, mm-hmm. when the dance was done, Sky Juice come to me and Sky Juice said, Yot, you can't hold your own. Yeah. So were you talking or selecting or doing both at that both. time? You're doing both at that time. Yeah. Then. Both. Mm-hmm. Because back then, sound man never really used to talk. You see how Rory and them man, they talk. Mm-hmm. Sound man back then never just talk them kind of way there. Mm-hmm. One and two. Most man, yeah, big up the cat call, you know. But then when Rory them came about and Captain Midnight, they kind of changed the dynamics of how selectors present songs. For sure. Or them pull up songs, you know. So I learned a lot from Captain Midnight. Mm-hmm. So when I'm in the dance and I'm talking, you know, you know, certain things like, you know, if you're going to drop on a love tune, you, you know, if you can't be with the one you love, you got to love the one you're with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I learned those things from Captain Midnight. Mm-hmm. So those are what I used when I was playing against Metro Media that mm-hmm. night. Because you see, at the ghetto, it was a different ear sound to the ears. Mm-hmm. And it went over well. King Bebo, give me another, give me two more big nights you remember on King Bebo. I had a big clash with a sound called New Clos. Yeah. From top range mm-hmm. across from the National Stadium, that area. And the two selectors on that sound was none other than G Fuss, who is on Stone Love, and Freddy Fuss from Kilimanjaro. But before Kilimanjaro, he was on Super D. Super D, yes. Right? But I didn't know that G Fuss and Freddy played on a song together. And I'm telling you, that was a night. Mm-hmm. And that dance, it was, man, dubs a fling like, well, you know, you got one waiting on the mature rice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I saw dubs at a CL, mm-hmm. a new clothes. When I say new clothes, was a powerhouse mm-hmm. when it comes to dub plates. And then my boss, mm-hmm. him never spear us. Him just say, yo, we are going to haul out. Mm-hmm. Them times, Bunny General and them man, they yes. lecture and them man, mm-hmm. they, 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 they are char high and pan dog. Yes, yes. Papa San, mm-hmm. Papa San, dirt, brother Dirt's man, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. And them man, they are chop dubs, you know. That was a major clash mm-hmm. between me and G-Force. And that's how we became friends, actually. Okay. Yeah. That's what how we became friends. What was it turn out? How did it turn out? What, what transpired in that? Actually, fashion? they say it was a draw. Yeah. They say Kawa went down to dub for dub. Yeah. And even when the promoter and the, 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 the venue owner say, yo, lock off. Time. There was no declared winner. Mm-hmm. Cause people are saying, what are the two sound? And <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it was that was an epic clash that night. Mm-hmm. Epic, epic. And epic this clash. was in your era also, Dunkirk? Well, it was in Vineyard Town, just yeah. topside Dunkirk. So actually on a, a land that was on Deanery Road, close to Maranatha Church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was their nucleus with Freddie and G-Fuss. 
never heard of that song and had no clue the two of them because their style is so different they were on one sound together never knew that that was a bad sound in, in them times mm-hmm. bad 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 sound new clothes mm-hmm. I'm telling you crazy what next night that you remember on King Bebo we went to Clarendon mm-hmm. and we played at a dance in Clarendon with um, King Stirrer Mars yeah man Mm-hmm. Kingster Mars. Yeah. I'm talking about when you're looking at the great super captain, Juna Demos and Nicodemus. Mm-hmm. You know, and then our boss now, he hired Cotty Rankin, um, Aitro Candy. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. um, you, you, Madhu. That was his contingency. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling you, it was epic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at this time, you guys were juggling, but plus you guys would still do the live artist live, and song. Live artist and song. Mm-hmm. That's how most artists back then, that's mm-hmm. how them, them craft, mm-hmm. them delivery. Mm-hmm. You know, most artists learn keys. Well, I should say modern artists, them learn keys and so being taught to them from a producer in a studio setting. Mm-hmm. Back then... Artists learn that from performing, yeah. singing a dance. Because most of the selector them don't even know a key. They mm-hmm. just play a tune. Mm-hmm. And artists have to find the key himself. It was like self-taught. Yeah. You know? Makes sense. Okay, so you guys stir Mars. You guys played with all type of songs and stuff. How long were you on King Bebo for? I was on King Bebo for a while, you know. Mm-hmm. I was on King Bebo for a while, but, you know... Internal issues, mm-hmm. and because back then I was a quiet youth, me, me kind of just take on myself because selectors. It's a situation where, when one man feel like he's not getting the spotlight, mm-hmm. you know. So I was like, you know what? Leave it alone. Leave it alone, because back then too, we in wonder. We didn't want to never boss yet. Mm-hmm. But there was a buzz about the name. Okay, you know what? You brought him up. This is the third time you brought up his name in this conversation. First part is, how did you meet Wayne Wonder in the first place? We used to go to see him primary school. Okay. I was trying to see him Cub Scout. Mm-hmm. You know? I used to go to see him church, Maranatha Gospel Hall. Yeah. So we know one of them from where I got primary school. And was he always looking to sing, or you guys were just hanging out as friends these times? No, we were just friends. I know mm-hmm. we're friends, though, back in them time, play football. We wanted was a, it, no, was he to this day is a great soccer player, you know? Okay. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Great soccer player. He was a bad cook, too, but, you know, me and him have a look cook off things. <laughs> Up to that, I wait there at the end, he sent me a video, yeah. a cook, and me have to do back a video, and the challenge is on, you know? Multi talented. <laughs> yeah, but soccer, he mm-hmm. is a great soccer player. Mm-hmm. So, growing up, I was always looking, he might be a soccer player. Mm-hmm. You know? But, you know, life, things change. When did he, you guys are hanging out doing your stuff, when did he start to show interest in music at this time, more on a professional level opposed to just singing a song on a corner, whatever the case is? You know, to be honest with you, I cannot, I, I couldn't sit here and pinpoint, mm-hmm. pinpoint it. You know, because we in, we in the youth, we start singing at church, you know. Okay. Yeah, man. You know, because I said to him, come from a family where, you know, was very church orientated, mm-hmm. especially my father, Mr. Charles. Mm-hmm. Big up yourself, Mr. Charles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I can't, I like pinpoint it, but when, when I'm playing, when I was playing bigger song, mm-hmm. Wayne was basically one of the resident artists. Okay. Yes, man. When we and old Mike, man, played Roof Tear Off. Yeah. He was like the area artist where, mm-hmm. you know, not care which artists come in, mm-hmm. Wayne can't work before them. Them have to work before Wayne. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean? So, from them times where we and sing for and sound and, you know, and to be honest with you too, one of the things where that happened that I say, yeah, this look like it's going to be it, mm-hmm. is when he was hired mm-hmm. by Metro Media. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I could say that 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 point. I mm-hmm. can say yeah, because when a sound system like Metro Media, who have so much big wigs on it, can say, "Youth, Metro Media, mm-hmm. you know something is about to happen. It's just for him now for us run with it." Yeah, and he did. Crazy when you when you guys were first starting out doing yourself. Was Wayne Wonder his original name, or he had a name before that? Wayne Wonder. It was always that. Yeah, some people call him Wayne. Mm-hmm. You know, but, you know, Wayne Wonder. Mm-hmm. And even you, before we go too far, how did you get your name, Freddie? Whoa, sometimes <laughs> when I talk about this, it, it kind of bring back some sad memories. Because mm-hmm. I got this, this name from one of my cousins. Mm-hmm. His mother and my mother's they're sisters. Mm-hmm. And we used to live in, as I say, in Magara Gully, right? And I used to be in a thing called Boys Brigade. Mm-hmm. It was another version like Cub Scout. Yeah. Right? We used to go always go on this Sunday parade thing, you know, dress up in a uniform. And my mother had this tendency where I, c- I can never remember 12 o'clock on a Sunday come and my mother not done cook. Mm-hmm. Right? Them time they live in a Magura Gully, one, one big yard. Mm-hmm. You know, fence off. One family live here, so next family there, so on. So I went to a parade one Sunday. Come home. But after one, mm-hmm. my mother not done cook. I'm hungry. I, I walk. <laughs> I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. I mean, I said, Mama. And she said, me not done cook. Go and take off your uniform. I was so upset. Mm-hmm. So she not done cook. I sat on the step. And I yeah. said, no, take off my uniform. And she said, well, sit down. Yeah. My cousin was washing him clothes, he was doing laundry. So from where the pipe was, to go hang up him clothes, he mm-hmm. must pass me upon the step. Mm-hmm. So every time him pass, Merrick, rest in peace, him look upon me and him say, you are afraid upon your dinner. Mm-hmm. You are afraid upon your dinner. Every time him pass, yeah. and I flash all water upon me, you are afraid upon your dinner. And when he was done and everything, he come up to me and I say, hmm, as of today, your name Fred man. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was the only one that was calling me Fred man. Yeah. And I'm talking about for months. Fred man, Fred man, Fred man, Fred man, Fred man, Fred man. Fred man. How many man call me Fred man? Mm-hmm. And then one day the man just look at me and say, You know what? As of today, your name Freddy. He just changed it. And the name stuck. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. Yeah. Because you know already, if you start to fight it, you know what's going to happen, right? Yeah. Me just accept it. Mm-hmm. You know what? A couple of years ago, I was speaking to a friend mm-hmm. and he said to me, yo, you remember when I first met you? I thought your real name was Freddy Goodas. Yeah. <laughs> and I started to laugh. I'm like, yeah, I say, you remember that? The yeah. man sent some money to Jamaica. Yeah. And that was the name where the money sent him. <laughs> You must yeah. contact back Western Union and change it. Because him know me as Freddy, mm-hmm. and because all of my sisters, them people call him Yvette Goodas, Marjorie Goodas, Beauty mm-hmm. Goodas. And so my brother get the name, Wayne Goodas. Yeah. So he thought Goodas was my name. <laughs> Boss. Yeah. yeah. Freddy Goodas. Goodas. Yeah. If you call him back and say, yo, no. Mm-hmm. Switch it up. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. Here, you're linking with Wayne now. You finished playing the big song after King Bebo, right? Yeah. Uh, so after King Bebo, what was your next move musically? The next move was just, Wayne Wonder was just the new sensation. Because Sanchez was out, mm-hmm. Pinchas was out, you know? Wayne Wonder was the name that was buzzing. Mm-hmm. And because me and him so close, we just had the road. Yeah. We just had the road from studio to studio. Somebody will link him for a dance and a country and a, a me and him. Mm-hmm. You know? And then to another ranking, come from Dunkirk to. I saw the tree how we start rolling, you know? Okay, so originally the click was you, Wayne, and Nardo. Another ranking. Was the original. Was the original crew. Mm-hmm. You know? So we, everywhere, and we have a little bridging. See, in Clement, we call him Magnum. Mm-hmm. We have a, 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 a ladder. Mm-hmm. And every in a Jamaica, a lot of they go. <laughs> so from playing sound to just them monks we ain't one that us, them monks we ain't one that. Mm-hmm. We just have vibes and I and I, and I enjoy life because we're young. Yeah. You know, we're young. 
Crazy. And were you guys going to studios, or this is more or less you guys are going to dance and stuff like Actually, we are hanging out at studio. Okay. What studio were you guys hanging out? Because if you, if, you know, if you know have a link certain ways, the producer not really not going to just come vice you, so. Mm-hmm. Right? But two, we ended up a buzz, and, you know, I remember we in Wanda f- did a song, a, com- a, a song with, um, what's his name, singing melody, you know. So amazing. Yes. The two of them did that song, mm-hmm. you know. I think that I was think for it was a King Tubbies, you know. Yes, yeah. yes. But when Sanchez sang the same song, mm-hmm. Sanchez won't blow up, so that one did the kind of, okay. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have we 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 there we enough studio man from King Tobies, King Jamis. Well, I wouldn't even say King Jamis because we couldn't go in a Jamis studio. Mm-hmm. But we stand up on the road mm-hmm. because them time they Soji and them man they are Bravo and them are run gate. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't have name, you can't go in a studio. Yeah. You understand know what I mean? I went Pentos up on Slipe Road with a big gate. I just hang out. Mm-hmm. I hope it was hang out and hope. Yeah. Okay, so you guys didn't get into penthouse in these places easily. The only one that you guys really got into was King Tubbies. King Tub- well, we ain't got into King Tubbies, mm-hmm. right? And then when me and we ain't got there, him have certain respect already. So him, him show up with me, mm-hmm. the respect is like automatic. Mm-hmm. So we just got you. You understand what I mean? And keep it moving from there. All right, so then now. I know, how did all of this lead up to you guys recording your first song? Or was even the first song that you guys recorded? Was that for Pickout? Yes. Okay. Tell us about that journey. How that even came about in the first place? To be honest with you, you know, we, ju- we were just vibing. Like, mm-hmm. me and we need to just vibe. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people don't know that Wayne Wanda's first album that he recorded, mm-hmm. that album had on, I can't remember the amount of tracks, but at least 80% was all original songs. Because mm. a lot of people think, say, yeah, he's the next singer of an artist, or whatever, but back then in Jamaica, so you have to break in the business. Yeah. If you're a singer, mm-hmm. if you can't sing one good cover version and get your foot in the door, mm-hmm. right? So when he, when he sang, um, you got a fast car and anything for you, mm-hmm. did those songs for Pentos, uh, mm-hmm. Donovan German, right? He was a taxi label, yeah, right? And the buzz and, you know, Pickout wanted to meet him. Yeah. So, you know, linking up with Pickout and we used to go all the way out of uh, out, uh, Pien Land, so yeah. Pien Avenue and Spanish Town Road. We used to sit on Panal and Plaza, they out there to feel hoes. Mm. A weird pan producer, producer, and a cool man. Mm. That's how we met people like um, Japanese mm. and Baka B. Mm-hmm. You know, because all them man, they were in the pick out camp. Mm-hmm. You know, and. And this is, we're talking about probably around 88, uh, yeah, 89. Yeah, yeah man. 80, late 87, 88. Mm-hmm. You know, going into when Gilbert, like Jamaica. Mm-hmm. You understand know what I mean? So. Doing all them rounds, me and we and take bus, we ride bicycle. We do have to do for reach at the studio. Mm-hmm. But writing songs and we and I, you know, I say, yeah, and the line, yeah, and the line. And we went to the studio one day, Pickout was recording. He used to record at um, Channel One. Mm. Right? And that day, I'm not lie to you. That day, my eyes are wide. Because I see the great Dan Gargan. The great ninja man walking and you know? Yeah. Me see the great Tinga Stewart mm. mm. step in and pliers. This was before Shaka Demos and Pliers. For sure. You know, talking pliers and I'm like, I mean I look at me, I say, whoa, I mean I see artists and I'm like, whoa. Mm-hmm. And they my record, cause that was the day they record the big tune. Okay, so basically all of what the big songs were recorded basically the same day. That's how recording used to go on. Yeah. Producer just link arts and say session I go on, you know. Mm-hmm. And now I really me, a, me have 10 spot. A man a jackie for spot. Producer listen to your tune and say, boy, I'm not feel that one day, you know. Next man. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like an Andy spot audition. And it was down, and you guys recorded these songs over at Channel One. Over Channel One. And it's so funny, we record, we were the last artist them for record. Because we didn't want to have a buzz, mm-hmm. name out their songs playing on the radio. But when you see people like Tinga Stewart walking to the studio, 
Japanese have a big name them time there. Mm-hmm. Players have big name them time there. You understand what I mean? So you have to wait. The money have to do for them thing. Mm-hmm. So when the producer say, we have an, we ain't say, you know, say, I'm a bridge in a combination style. Well, I'm, I'm DJ. Mm-hmm. And we ain't say, no, man, I'm rap. <laughs> <laughs> And the man say rap, yeah, yeah man, American rapping thing. No man, that never nah, working in Jamaica, man. Mm-hmm. And him say, you know what? Let me hear. Oh, let me hear it's all like. Mm-hmm. And them are run the ready, man. We just go around there and we ain't just start sing. And no matter what you do, girl, it's over now. You want me to make it up to you? And then me just come in and say, I don't need to brag, I don't need to boast because you are the girl that I love the most. Producer says, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Rewind, come again. Yo. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. The next take was just one take. Like, boom, done. We ain't trying to look arm on his hand. That was it. That was it. Crazy. Okay, why did you even decide to be a rapper opposed to like a a DJ or even try singing. Why the rap? You know, to be honest with you, me did love the DJ thing, like love DJ, DJ. But a Wayne Wanda, mm-hmm. Wayne Wanda say, yo, me could try something different. Mm-hmm. Because nobody now do this in a Jamaica. Shine was already out. Mm-hmm. But although Shine was, was in reggae music, he was an American based reggae artist. Got you. You understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we ain't say, yo man, we could try this. I would rise, I would, I would say, yeah, but you know. I would just do it and, you know, give thanks and praise it work. Crazy. And the crazy thing with even that song is I know it never came out as a single. No. It only came out on the uh, on album, album. But it's still one of the top three songs. songs. There was the, the top three songs on that album mm-hmm. was Cover Me mm-hmm. and Her Love Is Burning. Mm-hmm. And then and no matter what you do. Crazy. The top three songs. Yeah. So every sound man, every person who has that record, mm-hmm. they had to buy the album. Yeah. Because it did not come out, did on, not come 45. out on a single. That's why. And at this time here now, you recorded this song. Do you remember the first time you actually heard back the song? Was it on the radio? Was it in a dance? Where was the first place you heard back that song? Outside of the studio, the first listen back outside of that, it was... Um, what's his name? GT, GT Taylor mm. on radio. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, producers of Jamaica, they have them links, mm-hmm. make a phone call, yo, me have a hot one. Mm-hmm. And the producer link me and say, yo, GT show tonight, the tune they have to play. Mm-hmm. So we go back up at Dunkirk and we position ourselves and I listen to radio. Mm-hmm. And we all hear the juggling. Enough blank bus. Yeah. No, I'm not lie. My mother, you know, me see a smile on her face. Mm-hmm. Where, me see my mother smile enough time, you know, millions of time. Mm-hmm. But that smile eh, was the, sign, the smile of approval. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, because she, she never really liked me a play sound. Okay. Yeah, because I used to come in some late hours. Got you. You understand what I mean? And she used to always say, when you don't go country, if you don't have to sleep somewhere, sleep, and not come in. Because you don't know certain mm-hmm. certain garrison areas was them quote certain places as garrison. Mm-hmm. You know, it's unpredictable. You know, you know uh, I come in late at night and get caught up in her things. So she just worried. Mm-hmm. But then when she hear it and you know, she see reaction and things, she's like, you know. Big one there. Yeah. People. So you guys are now, you guys are still hanging out and stuff. What did this song now do for both you guys' career at this time here now when it came out? Why that song they do a lot? Mm-hmm. It made us household names. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean? It made us... What's the word I'm looking for? It made us more in demand. Okay. You know, more producers, more promoters, more artists I reach out. Did you guys at that time here when now the song is bubbling, did you guys ever perform it anywhere like on a big stage or on a song or anything? Yes, man. Perform that song. Back then, every major shows I keep in Jamaica. Yeah. We were on it. Okay. Yeah, man. We were on all the major shows from... Um, when Bigger Food used to keep film Christmas thing in a national yes. arena. 
We've been all them shows over Fort Clarence. Mm-hmm. Like every Sunday. Yeah. The biggest of the biggest stage shows. All across Jamaica. Dance. Skeng Dan keep a big dance at uh, 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 Clarendon one night. Mm-hmm. And them send two Mercedes Benz. <laughs> 190 E Benz. I can't mm-hmm. forget. Come pick me up. Yeah. Country. Performer Portland. Um, what a guy the name? Peter Ice. Them man, they, you know, I'm talking back then, them man, they attack man. Mm-hmm. We perform that song in a every parish, every town. Me don't know what we don't perform that song there. That's how crazy it started That's, to get. Me I tell you. Mm-hmm. Bookings, pant up a bookings, pant up a bookings, pant up a bookings. That's wild. How about dub plates? Did you guys actually record any dub plates or anything? Yes, man. Dub plates. No dub plates. Yeah. You know? No dub plates. But the, it, it was a thing where sometimes... We used to sit on the bridge. Mm-hmm. I and mean, we one down. And we look on one and I would say, yo, you can't believe this? Yeah. <laughs> and we would say, eh. Yeah. But them time they were still a walk. We still a ride bicycle. Mm-hmm. Still living with our parents them. You know, we still have responsibility. Mm-hmm. We have to deal with. Because money are coming, you know. On my side, money are coming. Mm-hmm. But me I help out my mother and father. Come on, I have a piano. You understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. We don't wonder if him siblings are going to take care of. Mm-hmm. I would still help out one or two people who link you for your thing. Yeah. Great. So at this time, did they consider you guys like a duo or was just this was just a one song that Wayne Wonder did with Freddy? To be honest with you, some people consider us as a duo, but some people see we as a separate entity. Mm-hmm. You know, because to be honest with you, I was the artist artist. My mindset wasn't on the artist thing. That wasn't really... No. Yeah. My thing was playing music. Mm-hmm. Wanted to learn everything behind the scenes of music. Mm-hmm. Right? That was that was my thing. Mm-hmm. But every time the opportunity arise, and we and say, yo, we just break out that thing. Yeah. What was the next song you guys recorded after um, It's Over Now? We record Bad Boys. Yes. Who did you guys record that for? Pick out. Okay, so it's two songs two you guys did for Pick out. How did Bad Boys come up now? Bad Boys come up because the neighborhood that we live in now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, you see so much things. Nobody now have to tell you. Mm-hmm. You see it with your eyes. You know? I would just, would just sit down and pen it. Bad, 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 bad boys. And it, it, it was on that rhythm, um... The miracle, the miracle. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Tinga Stuart was on the rhythm. Think Japanese was on it. Nada Rankin was on it. God, I can't remember, but it was a bad rhythm. But I think this one now, this one might have came out as a single on forty five. Yeah, it came out as a single. Mm-hmm. It was on a, it was on a seven inch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, this one was on a seven inch. And how did how did that do compared did, to the first did. one? It did pretty well, mm-hmm. but not as big as the first one. Mm-hmm. Because the first one had had star power in terms of Ninja Man and they were on the same rhythm mm-hmm. and them trying to play as hot like fire. Mm-hmm. You know, so it had that pull mm-hmm. to pull it, you know, compared to Miracle. Mm-hmm. Miracle was more a subtle rhythm. The rhythm was more subtle than the Cover Me rhythm. Mm-hmm. The Cover Me rhythm was a you know, back then... It had a bong a, Yeah, it had mm-hmm. a bong it had, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, that was going on good there. But, but it was it was, it was, it was, it was, a tremendous success mm-hmm. for a follow-up. Yeah. You know? And this is when everything is going on good. All right, so then now, at this time here, I know, did Wayne already record for Penthouse this time here? The, no. The, uh, he didn't record yet? No. Okay, so... Well, the, he recorded for, for Jeremian. Yeah. On a taxi, which is Pentos. Yeah. I remember he did... Um, Fast car. Fast car or anything yeah. for you. So technically, okay, yeah. Okay, so this was all in the same, same space. Yeah, because yeah, he recorded those two mm-hmm. singles, and that was what got him out there, a buzz. Yeah. Everybody I thought about this new youth, we ain't one that, we ain't one that. And, you know, his mm-hmm. personality just made it more better. Mm-hmm. People say, yo, the youth, he, 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 he manageable him. He can easily approach him, and he, he have no ego. And, yeah. You understand what I mean? But then when we, when we did the song now, and the cover me rhythm, you know, it was like, 
cement God. that you as a bonafide artist. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you guys have out these two songs now. So what was the next move for either him or you or you guys together now? To be honest, we were doing our thing as friends. Mm-hmm. Same way. Him not leave me. Any mm-hmm. producer I'm gonna link, I me and him. Mm-hmm. You know? And him I do recording for this producer, that producer. But because he was a singer, mm-hmm. Most of the rhythm them with my game is for singers. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean? So when well, we got the opportunity to meet Patrick Roberts, shocking vibes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Patrick, uh, you know, a dialogue with me and yo, Freddie, you know, yeah, not come a studio and you know, mm-hmm. but because they were already recording and doing their session at Penthouse. Mm. You understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was just natural. Start record for Shocking Vibes. Okay, so you guys, you recorded for Shocking Vibes also? Yeah, man. Record for Shocking As Vibes. a duo or by yourself? By myself. What was your name by yourself? Freddy. Freddy. Rapper Freddy. Wow, so what songs did you record for, um, for um, Shocking well, Vibes? Well, in this modern era, mm-hmm. it is, what, 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 what we can say, it's not politically correct. Mm-hmm. To lay out the name of the song, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a rap, a rap song. You know, you see it. Watch out for them, y'all, because they will dress up and look like your mother. They're on the east side and on the west side, and they will, you know. Mm-hmm. I can't really, because yeah. I don't want YouTube to give you a strike. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I I understand loud and clear. Okay, so you became because remember at this time you weren't a hundred percent committed to being an artist, no. but you still okay. You met Patrick Robert. That Dibley night. Mm-hmm. Who was over at Shocking Vibes when you got there? Whoa, Shocking Vibes. Mm-hmm. Back then, I'm talking about Little Kirk. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about Tanto Metro. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about Beanie Man. I'm talking about Snagapos. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about Mr. Konina Baggy. Little Lenny. Little Lenny. Mm-hmm. When, I'm talk- when you're talking about DJs who came and... Okay. It's like all the pandemic... Mm-hmm. came and just changed the dynamic of the world mm-hmm. when Little Lenny drop he changed the dynamics of dance all in a Jamaica mm-hmm. a little youth yeah the, when the man drop right and I keep te- I always tell people you know, have this conversation I say a lot of people talk about Dave Kelly through Baby Sham mm-hmm. But DF Kelly has been doing these things from them time. He was working with Shocking Vibes. He was the man being a Dave, being a little any them man. Dave Kelly boss? Dave Kelly, a, the man is a genius. Mm-hmm. Man is a genius. Mm-hmm. She, she, she have the gun in her. Remember, sir, a him named Rude Boy Kelly, you know? Yes, man. Because if you think back, if you look at a lot of those shocking vibes label, you'd always see Rude Boy okay. Kelly in there somewhere. And then he even had a label called Rude, Rude Boy, Boy Kelly, Kelly at one time. Yes. Yeah. And it was closely associated with shocking vibes, vibes. at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Dave was very instrumental in the whole Little Lenny situation. Yes, man. Mm-hmm. And Little Lenny was the, 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 he was the Steph Curry of dance all back then. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember my first opportunity to fly on an airplane. Mm-hmm. I sit on, on the bridge in a Dunkirk. Actually, I'm there, weep and we ain't wonder. Mm-hmm. And I say, I can't just pull up. Nice, pretty under them time there. You know, I youth at Jamaica, you know, under them with the flip up lights, mm-hmm. front light them. Mm-hmm. And I say, Patrick Roberts, and I say, What's going on, boss? And I say, Yo, you, you have a passport? And I say, Yeah. He mm-hmm. say, All right, you, you want to go foreign? I'm going to say, yeah. <laughs> I'm say, all right. Mm-hmm. I think it was like a Wednesday. Yeah. And like I say, all right, Friday, we'll go foreign. So I said to him, yeah, which foreign? <laughs> 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 yeah. And him say, Kia man, we have, we have some, some show, Kia man. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say, all right. Jump off of the bridge, I'm going to tell my mother. My mother said, all right. 
So came in was the first place you yeah. you went. And him come back in the evening and take my passport and mm-hmm. paperwork, everything was lined up and mm-hmm. we we'll fly out the Friday morning. Who was who was on the show there? Little Lenny was the headliner. Mm-hmm. Tanto Metro. Licka Kirk. Mm-hmm. Beanie Man. Snagapos mm-hmm. and myself. So you were basically a part of the shocking vibes crew at this time here now? Well, not a not a part of the crew, mm-hmm. but I was someone where Patrick Roberts, up to this day, me and Patrick Roberts still have a great relationship. Mm-hmm. And he always look out for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He must say, ah, Freddy, we have a big thing done, so and so. Mm-hmm. Come on. What have a next thing run so? Come on. He used to look out for me. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Okay, so you guys went to the Caymans. How was the Caymans show? It was great, man. Mm-hmm. Great experience. Mm-hmm. You know, first time flying on a plane and landing in a foreign country, you know, you're mm-hmm. kind of wide-eyed and you're looking and you say, wow. You know, and the experience was just great. Mm-hmm. You know, like me and Beanie Man, me and Beanie Man farm, we farm a bun mm-hmm. on that trip. Okay. Because me and Beanie Man, Beanie Man wasn't a, no, 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 Big DJ like what he was is now. Lenny was the man in the camp. Little Lenny at that was time the man there. in the camp. Mm-hmm. You know, but Beanie Man is a great artist. Mm-hmm. But Lenny had the big tune them. And me and Beanie Man were sharing the same room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, me and Beanie. Up to this day, me and Beanie have a great relationship. Anyway, we buck up. He mm-hmm. buck him at Jamaica, wherever. You know? That's wild. That's yeah, that, yeah, me and him just have this great relationship from mm-hmm. back then, mm-hmm. from the Pentos era, Shocking Vibes era to now. Yeah. I didn't realize that you were part of the, or even if not a, an official member, but you were in that Yeah, man, I was in the circle. Vibes. I was in the circle. Yeah. Yeah, man, we used to go over Liquor Kurt, their mother host. Mm-hmm. She used to feed me. Yeah, man, like I'll, even Tanto Metro. Mm-hmm. We used to go to Tanto Metro Yard. Up to last week, me and Tante Metro talk. Mm-hmm. Me and them man is still a relationship to this day. That's crazy. Came back now from Cayman. And you see the thing with it, the first time you're flying too, it's not like you flew with you and Wayne Wonder so they almost had you guys as a duo. This is you by, by yourself myself. with the yeah. shocking vibes. You understand? Yeah, man. And how, how was it when you came back? So then now when you came back, okay, made your first trip, what were your next moves after you came back now? Well, my next move was, I, I still had it in my mind, I want to learn more about behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah, I was just intrigued by engineering, you know. One thing used to intrigue me in the studio was, you know, when them say punching the artist. Yeah. I used to always wanted to learn that. Because mm-hmm. I used to marvel at it, you know. They say, okay, up. Uh, Come again, rewind. I'm going to punch you in from mm-hmm. right there, sir. Mm-hmm. Mrs. said, yo, do we owe them time it? And, and even when they're playing it back, you know, you know, glitch. Mm-mm. I say, yo, I want to learn to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was more where your mind was at because you went through the song, played song. You're in the artist's life. Yeah, you're living it. That's cool. But you still have another desire to, you want to learn engineering yes, and man. producing and stuff like that. More I learn engineering, more I become a producer and, mm-hmm. you know, so having the buzz with the name and we are perform all over the place and I travel and I do this and I do that and, mm-hmm. you know, we met the great Steely and Cleavy. Yeah. You know, me and Wayne Wanda, Actually, it's so funny, you know. Back mm-hmm. then, producers used to come find you, you know. Mm-hmm. When there's a buzz about you, you know, mm-hmm. producer come find you. Yeah. I will see this about six big ninja bikes. Boom, boom, boom. Because them tennis steel is a biker. Yes. The Silver Hawk crew. Mm-hmm. Him, Balsley. I can't I can't, I will never forget. It was him, Balsley, Jerry, mm-hmm. and a couple more men. Mm-hmm. And them ride come. Boom, 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 boom. And the bridge and them ask a man, yo. We are looking for a youth named Freddy and back then the Madinado said, Yeah, see him there. Yeah. Cause I don't want to know. Uh, who this? Yeah. And I'm a bridging where he passed away, you know. Rest in peace. The man said, Yeah man, a boy I'm live, but I uh, who know. And I said, No man, I saw so silver ox sound and steel and blah blah blah. So me here, them say that now. I say, yo. And them right, come up. They look a truck in front of my yard, they saw. Mm-hmm. 
And me and my reason, I said, yeah, man, are you and Wayne wonder where I try to find and me I said, well, we ain't live down the street, you know. Mm-hmm. Right? And him said, I said, all right, here what? What are your youth can ride with me and a second man, a rest of man them stay here, so mm-hmm. we'll go for Wayne all right. and come back. And when Wayne come back, we sit down from the veranda. Mm. Yeah, man. When Steely came look for you guys, now Steely, what was it? What was your intention? What was the plan when he came looking for you guys? What did he want to do with you guys? He want he want record cause we want that the artist, mm-hmm. the hot sensation. He got the boss now. He's half the boss. So yeah. he now if he look for producer again, mm-hmm. producers are come. Mm-hmm. Producers are send messages. We need to find a youth. We need to find a way. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he was he was at the point now where he could have said, I don't want to record for that producer there, but I got a record for him. Got you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was it was a recording relationship. But then over time I became so interested in the whole behind the scenes thing and I'm talking to Steely. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, Steely, I want to learn all of this, you know. And he must say, yeah, for real? So it happened that every man in him used to ride come from upper Barbican. Mm-hmm. He used to come pick me up down at Kirk. Me and him in the studio when mm-hmm. we and all our record. He might teach me engineering. Steely? Yes, man. Him right. there for the M1, a little keyboard that he was a Yamaha. Mm-hmm. I'm used to work with that. Come on, I learn everything. Mm-hmm. Clevia showed me certain things from the drum machine, the Akai yeah. drum machine back then. Them time the Bulby and Fata, mm-hmm. you know, the, you know, engineer, yeah. but they were young in the business, not as big as them is now. I mean, I learned certain things from them off a pan and you understand what I mean? So did you actually record any music for Steely or you yeah, were in, you recorded we for Steely? We recorded for Steely and Cleavy. Me and Wayne wanna record about ten combination songs. What? For Steely and Cleavy. And I, and as far as the information that we got, that album was released, I think, in the Asia Pacific mm-hmm. rims, them place. Mm-hmm. And I recorded three singles. Mm-hmm. I was on the taxi. The, is, he had, a, he had a, a version of a taxi called the Limousine. Yes. I'm on that. Mm-hmm. I'm on that rhythm. Rapping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And we did a song which it was it was it had a big buzz in Jamaica called um Dream Girl. I think I remember that song, yes. Yeah, we didn't want to do that mm-hmm. one day. And the next one we didn't want to say, I always feel like somebody's watching me. <laughs> you know? So we recorded a f- quite a few songs for Steely and Cleavy. Okay. Quite a few songs. Yeah. But my head was still in the production side. In the engineering and in the production. Engineering and yeah. you know, just just learning. I want to learn more about what makes a song from the beginning to where mm-hmm. it is. What did Steely tell you? What were some of the times you could remember sitting down talking with Steely, certain things he said to you that to this day you'll never forget? One of the main things Steely said to me, Steely said. As a person in the business, mm-hmm. you know less than the next man. Which means, don't go in a studio, don't go around no artist and talk like you know more than the next man. Mm-hmm. Because you don't know where that man know. You don't know where that man can do. The man said, make sure your brain is a sponge. That is why when we used to go to the studio, we used to just sit in the studio yard mm-hmm. and we just observe and take in everything. Mm-hmm. When I still expose me to people like Dennis Brown, Gregory Isaacs, you know, Shabba Rankin, name, name the artist them. Yeah. He exposed me to those men. So would you say you were like almost like an apprentice or not even that? He was I a was still his apprentice. Yeah. That's what he used to call me, my apprentice. That is why, you remember when you called me mm-hmm. and you said you, you saw the picture? 
Yes, okay. You know what? Let me talk about let me talk about this picture here now. This picture that I saw had you yeah. as in Freddy, Wayne Wonder, Steely Cleavy, General Degree, Garnet Silk, um, Nardo Rankin, Nardo, um, Bulby, Fata, Fata um, and Raja, Raja Roots, I think his name was, is in yes. that picture. Tell me, tell me how that came about, because that's an epic picture, boss. Yeah, that, you know, I don't even know who took yeah. that picture, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All I know was, yeah. we're, if you notice in that picture, mm -hmm. Steely and Cleavy was sitting down yes. around the mixing console, mm -hmm. and I was sitting beside Cleavy mm -hmm. because I was Steely's apprentice. So he saw and I said, grab a chair and come sit down. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? Enough days, Wayne Wanda, I do film thing wherever, whichever studio, mm -hmm. and me the monk Steely. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? And we were just in the studio. Garnet Silk no boss yet. Garnet Silk just come out country with Tony Rebel. Come from country with Tony Rebel. Yeah. See? And we were just, that was just Mixing Lab Studio. Where we used to just... Okay, it was Mixing Lab. Steely and Cleavy used to work out of Mixing Lab. Mm -hmm. Right? And we were just at the studio vibing. And somebody said, group picture. Yeah. And the picture snap, and it it just go out in the earth. Mm -hmm. Crazy. When I seen it again, as I said, we've been linking for years. When it came to promotions, you come link us with tickets. When we in Wayne Wonder or any of them are in town, we say, "Yo, come, let's." Whatever the case is. But once when, when I seen that picture, it just it was like a lightning bolt hit me. I said, "Hold on." Freddy, bro, I had to link you after I seen that picture. I said, "Yo, me and Freddy, we have to sit down and talk." You yes, understand? Man. That's an epic picture, man. Epic. Cool. When first time my son saw that picture, I was like, Dad, yeah. is that you? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. He's like, but is that like garnet silk? Garnet silk? They read, I'm going to say, yeah, that's garnet silk before he's garnet silk. Mm -hmm. And he's like, wow. And he's like, oh, when? And then he start. And I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. My son is musically inclined to, you know. Yeah. Back then, okay. So Steely now, because talking to artists, you get a different version of Steely than if you're talking to producers. Yes. When you talk to artists, he almost comes across as a bully or a tough love. You understand? But talking to producers and engineers, it's slightly different. What was your experience dealing with him? Or did you see Steely really become that monster with an artist or something like that? I saw both sides of him. Mm-hmm. You know, and I saw sides of him that I had to step back and say, whoa, because mm -hmm. I used to see him do a lot of things for people mm -hmm. who were on the, where do I say, the bottom of the food chain. Mm -hmm. And he used to do so much and nobody not know about it. Mm -hmm. And he used to always say to me, if you have to help, help and not look no glorification from it right but then when it comes to recording mm -hmm. and my deal with some artists mm -hmm. you see that energy a burst of energy yeah and it's a man where we just in you know, the middle of a recording just stop it and say yo yeah yeah me shoot the session done yeah if certain things now go how him envision it yeah but then you have the next side of him now where when it comes to the Playing the instruments and rhythm wise, mm -hmm. the, you see the genius in him. When he play all the keyboard, I see him shut him eye and, mm -hmm. and feel and it. And he feel the music. Mm -hmm. And he was a great bike rider. Yeah. Motorcycle. When I say great, great. Mm -hmm. Crazy, great old Steely and Cleavy. Steely. Do you actually get to record a full session or a song or anything with steel as in you're the producer you're the engineer or more or less you were overlooking and seeing what he was doing overlooking mm -hmm. and he would say okay um you're gonna take advice yeah mm -hmm. you understand what i mean because I, I i can remember when one session when they recorded um singing melody mm -hmm. my good good friend singing melody yeah recorded um What's the name of that song again? Shower me with your love. I was one of the 
the engineer working on that session <laughs> with Steely. Yeah. And Wayne Wonder recorded Still Say Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, like punching in and, you know, yeah. Steely was, he was the, the artist, you might tell the artist what to do. But mm -hmm. he might turn and say, okay, Freddie, rewind. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rewind. And he say, okay, cue it, write the song. And he say, okay, punch it. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, take the voice then. And I learned a lot from Fata and Bolby. That's what I was just about to say, because I know Fata was also another apprentice of Steely at yeah. this time here. So it was more or less, it was Steely Cleavy. You. Steely and Cleavy were the producers. Yes. And they used to work at Mixing Lab. Mm -hmm. But as far as I can remember, Fata and, and Bolby were the exclusive engineers where they used to work with. Got you. So, if they go book the studio, every time you go there, I just them and their work. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got to know Fata and, and Bolby. Mm -hmm. Crazy, but the fact that you were in those sessions with the, the breakout for singing melody and winning kadoos are massive. Garnet hits. Silk, Tony Rebel, General okay. Degree. All right, do you remember <laughs> specifically a moment working with a young Garnet Silk? Yes, man. Mm -hmm. I remember when him just come from country, I yeah. want long sleeve. Mm -hmm. we, we used to say, What's your old man shirt? <laughs> 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 And you know the pants and with the seam when, when it press it stand up mm -hmm. at attention. Yeah. And I look on this youth and him now no locks. Just skinny and just little. Yeah. It's like when you see him little in that picture. Mm -hmm. Just little so. And he's just staying at the studio and just quiet like a mouse. Mm -hmm. But when him growing at the vice boot and him open his mouth, yeah. you say, holy. You know? And I don't know if the story is true, mm -hmm. but I, I was told that a steely gave me the name Garnet Silk, but I don't know if it's true. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if it's true, yeah. but they must say a steely because he was actually named Bimbo. Yes, that I did know. When he was DJ, this they was DJ. before he was singing, yeah. Yeah, and the name Bimbo. Mm -hmm. So they must say steely because steely was a man where he must always like, give me people a name. Mm -hmm. And he, he was the king mm -hmm. of muster. Yeah. If you're there at the studio, try don't slip yeah. up and say certain <laughs> things. Because him own you for the day. Yeah. You understand what I mean? You can't have their own seal and a man call you and say, yo, may I come? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> certain things you can't utter. Mm -hmm. him, him, let me say, him rub it in. Yeah. See all the next day and him bring it up back. But that's how he was a jovial, fun person. Mm -hmm. You know, and through him, I got to meet everyone around Silver Axe Sound. Because I used to be up in a barbican, up there with them. Them time the Balsy and Jerry and them, and they play the sound. Yeah. Them time they might ride bike with Tiger and, you understand what I mean? Those days are just so crazy. Before we even get off of this Garnet Silk, what was Garnet Silk like as a person? Very quiet. Mm -hmm. Very quiet, easygoing, mm -hmm. approachable. You know, if you see me at the studio, anybody can approach him and say, well, go on, Bridget. Mm -hmm. And him just say, yes, Bridget, and talk to you. Mm -hmm. That was my experience with him. With him. Right. I mean, never see him burn a spliff yet. Okay. To this day, I don't know if he smoke. Yeah. But I never see him burn a spliff yet. You know what? That's a, that's a good point, because I don't ever really remember... Seeing a picture with Garnet Silk with a spliff. Now that you yeah. bring that up. Missy, missy, every man me there on a shoulder, missy burn spliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me have to burn that thing before me go vice, you know. Yeah. yeah. Ah, when them done vice, I come out and say, boy, that session they're bridging. John, mm. me need a spliff. <laughs> Garnet Silk, I've never seen him roll a spliff yeah. or take a draw. I don't know if him do it, yeah. but as I said, I never seen him do it. You don't remember seeing him do it. And I, I was around him a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crazy. Do you remember any songs that you guys recorded with Garnet Silk? God, right off the bat, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But we recorded a, a few songs with him. Yeah. Yeah. I remember one time I was at Jamie's studio. Mm -hmm. And I saw him. And two of I make contact and he see me and he's like, Yo! Apprentice! <laughs> <laughs> you know, me and Wayne wanted to go over there. Wayne yeah. wanted was inside the studio cutting some dubs. Mm -hmm. 
You know, them time the Ghana silk had a name now. Mm-hmm. You know, and a traveler and a do him thing and him just start, him lock start, grow, you know. Mm-hmm. And him, yo, apprentice, come here, man. And he was with, you know, some big name folks. Yeah. But him recognized me from the stealer and him never, him never shunned me or mm-hmm. act like him too big for me. Because we did us have this mutual thing then around Steely and Cleavy, you know? Mm-hmm. That's wild. They're the great garden and silk here. Steely and Cleavy. So you're around them, you were around Steely for a while doing your thing, you recorded, you did per, um, engineering. Yeah, learning the, and you all know, of those stuff there. Le- certain little things from Steely, the craft, mm-hmm. how to interact with artists, you know, studio. One thing I learned from Steely, he used to always say, anything you're doing in life, make sure you're upon time. Mm. Because he used to say, sit down in the chair, and he used to say, you see, in your soul, time and money. So when you book studio time for your artist, and him not day up on time, your money are born up. Because mm-hmm. if you say four o'clock at studio time, remember, you pay the studio already, you know. Of course. And if the artist not come, you can't start work. So, mm-hmm. be on time. Great advice. There was another name you brought up earlier in this conversation, Dave Kelly. All right. How did you meet Dave Kelly in the first place? I met Dave Kelly through when we were young, very, very young, from mm-hmm. Cub Scout days. Because mm-hmm. he used to go to, uh, what is it, Franklin Town Primary. Mm-hmm. And me and Wayne, we used to go to Clancarty Primary. But we were all members of the same Cub Scout, which is Clancarty. Mm-hmm. But Dave Kelly's from Vineyard Town. And I was originally from Vinato, so that's how I met him. Mm. And he was into music from like a long time ago, or this was something you were surprised when you met him back in the you music? You know, to be honest with you, I don't even know how he got into music. Mm-hmm. But seeing him back at Pentos, I was like, whoa, mm-hmm. Dave Kelly, you know? And, but his, his brother, Tony, mm-hmm. Tony was in the music too. Yeah. Because Tony was an engineer, I think he was at Tough Gang mm-hmm. for a while. And they were out there. And Tony Kelly was one of the, he is, to, in my opinion, one of the, still is one of the greatest producers out of Jamaica. 1,000%. Right. So I guess having a brother like Tony doing it, mm-hmm. you know, they, it was just natural. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. So then you, you've you known him for a while, but you guys didn't start to connect, I guess, until you got the shocking vibes. Well, me and him, we, we, we connect when, when Wayne Wanda started going to Penthouse mm-hmm. and being around Donovan Jermaine and, and, you know, Stumpy. Stumpy was an engineer then, mm-hmm. there, and we didn't connect back with Dave. Mm-hmm. And then when me and Wayne got Penthouse, that's when we connect with Dave, mm. you know. And because Dave was working for both Shocking Vibes and Pentos. Same time, because you said Pento, Shocking Vibes was recording all the Pentos. They used to, Pentos was their base. Yeah. Right. So it was natural when them book studio time, mm-hmm. Dave, them are the engineer. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean? Until one point now they start record, recording next door for the next building mm-hmm. at um, Gussie. The music Works. Music Works. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, from them times, we and Dave connect back and, you know. And we had a mutual friend, too, you know, Light Atterbury. We all went to school together. So mm-hmm. it was just one connection. There was one link there because yeah. I know it was you, there was Wayne. Were you around when Frankie Sly came into the picture? Yes, man. Mm-hmm. Frankie Sly come from just down the, from East Kingston, mm-hmm. the Rockford side. Mm-hmm. Frankie Sly, I'm a dope up to this day. Like, one of the things I'm proud of in my life mm-hmm. I would say 90% of the people um, that I came into contact with mm-hmm. from that era who is still on earth with us, I still have a great relationship with them. Mm-hmm. Even if I don't see them for two years or three years, when we link up back, it was like it's a continuation of where we left off. You know, there's never, I have no animosity with no, no man from them times to know. Mm-hmm. And it's something that we talk about all the time. Me, Wayne, you know, like Tanto Metro. Like, we just had this, it was like a brotherly thing. There was no ego, nobody, no bigger than nobody. And, mm-hmm. you know, what does get to you? What does I try to make it? 
You know, what well, if I try to make it? Makes sense. And even somebody like uh, Daddy Screw, when did he show up on your radar? He show up on my radar from Rallington Town, you know. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we used to walk from Dunkirk, go around Rallington Town, mm-hmm. run an anti bar and play pinball and all these things. And Rallington Town had a big bad sound named Blackstone. Yes, yes, yes. We used to tangle up regular with new clothes. Mm-hmm. So the selectors and Blackstone were Weber, mm. who used to play Metro Media. Yes. And Daddy Screw was also one of the selectors. Yeah. Right? You know, it's so ironic. A few weeks ago, the guy, the owner for Blackstone, the one owner, Nancy, passed away in Jamaica. Rest in peace, Nancy. Mm-hmm. Last time I was in Jamaica, I went to go check him. And, him, you know, I might tell me he might relaunch the sound and all these things. But, you know, mm-hmm. he passed away like maybe three weeks ago two, three weeks ago. Hmm. But Daddy's crew was one of the select up on a sound day. Before, and Twitch, before artists. Yeah, Super Twitch. Mm-hmm. Was, he was with the man them, mm-hmm. but not, not like 100% because his brothers, yeah. they had a sound. I can't remember the name of the sound. Mm-hmm. Out in our base, the Rockford side there. Yeah. You know, but it was like, I remember the black store, like with the man them. He mm-hmm. away about them. They be tight. Up to this day, the whole of them still tight. Yeah. You know, but that sound, mm-hmm. Daddy Screw and Weber. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and Blackstone. Blackstone. So do you remember where Daddy Screw went from selecting to now becoming an artist? Yeah, because he was, he was always a DJ, you know. Okay. Yeah, man. Him, him, him come from a vine just like Spraga Benz. Mm-hmm. Spraga Benz used to DJ in him like a meter room. Like in, 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 a, in a Dunkirk... The apartments, like there's three apartments to one side mm-hmm. on a building, right? And then the ground floor, one of the apartments on the ground floor, they had a little room where all the electrical meters for each apartment used to be. Yeah. You know, it was a nice, decent, maybe about half the size of this room. Mm-hmm. So Sprocket Bins used to always in that, that cause to access that room, you have to go actually on the, his veranda okay. to go into that room, right? Mm-hmm. So he was always in there playing look record him on a DJ. That is crew was the same thing like Spraga Benz. Mm-hmm. Them are doubly night. But they were doing their other things, schooling and, you know, that is crew a selector. Mm-hmm. And he was a mic's man from the sound. So it was okay. natural. And him a DJ. Yeah. You know, so it was it was a it was a natural progression from just being a DJ, a selector and a mic's man and us jump into DJing. That's why it was so easy for those guys with their flow mm-hmm. because they are honed them craft from a long time. That's big right there to know that. You brought up that name that I wanted to know now too, Spraga Benz. When did he come into the whole fold, into your focus? From my DJ and I meet a room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I go out. He used to go to camp around. Yeah. My weird one, I used to go camp around. Mm-hmm. I used to go to Vinaya Town and then we used to go camp around. Mm-hmm. Right? And Spraga Benz was just doing his thing, you mm-hmm. know. Him that doing thing mainly not around us, mm-hmm. you know, but him that doing thing. And over time, you know, recording, DJ and meeting producers doing him thing, you know, him just, you know, just get that break. Yeah. And it was just natural for him and we didn't want to have a link up mm-hmm. because of school connection and coming from Dunkirk, the same link. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just a natural fit. Same one link there. Yeah. And one name that we didn't bring up yet in this conversation is Mr. Bojo Bantan. Bojo. All right. How did you meet him or how was he involved with the whole fold of what was going on? I met Bojo Chu Wien, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I met Bojo Chu Wien. I remember Bojo, like, if you can remember Bojo when Bojo now on the locks on him head, mm-hmm. right? His personality, if you know him from then to now, is the same. Okay. Yeah. Mm. He's in, now he's more in depth in his thoughts and when him, 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 him speak about certain things. Yeah. You know, but Wayne and Buju was friend, and then I met Buju mm-hmm. through Wayne. So that's 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 where the the link. But over the years, me and Buju friendship became like solid. Mm-hmm. Really, really solid. Mm-hmm. Because I know all of this wonderful stuff is going on. You're linked with all these artists. You're in the studio. You're, you're, you're 
apprenticing and all of this good stuff. So then when did you migrate to Canada then? Migrate to Canada in 1990. Okay. Right. And it was a situation where as a man, there comes a time in your life when you have to make a decision. For sure. And you have to make that decision to benefit you and not anybody else. Because mm-hmm. sometimes people make decisions because pressure from this person or that person or that entity. Mm-hmm. And they make a decision and then years down the road, them come back and say, I regret me to do that, you know, because of them people that make me do it, you know, mm-hmm. and ABCDFG. But I migrated to Canada and I was here in Canada, you know. You have baby mother, married, a child come into play, mm-hmm. and then relationship goes sour. Mm-hmm. Because as a man at my age now, I am comfortable talking about certain things. Yeah. So when that came into the, the, the picture, I made a decision. Because I have to take care of my youth. Mm-hmm. So I became a single parent. Mm-hmm. Way before my youth even start junior kindergarten. Yeah. I became a single parent basically when my son just turned two years old. Okay. So mm-hmm. I made a decision, say, you know what? My son is more important to me than music. Mm-hmm. And me, 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 me just, just I live my life, I take care of my son. Mm-hmm. And that was the reason why you decided to migrate to Canada at that time there? No, I was already in Canada. Oh, you're already here. Okay. Yeah, I was in Canada. Mm-hmm. So I was like, my son is more important to me. Mm-hmm. Because so, remember, you have all the contacts. You're, you're linking with Wayne, stealing Cleavy's hat. Um, everybody's hot right there. You yeah. know what I mean? So but then, my son did hata. Mm, you understand? Yeah, man. My you son did I mean? hata. My son was 10 times hotter than... We and me love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bujo, me love you. Me love everybody. Me love uno, but my son did hata da uno. Mm. You had to make the big man choice? Yeah, man. Or do I still pursue this musical dream or do I take care of what's in front of me right, right now? now? You understand? Yes, And clearly man. the decision was, let me take care of what's in front of me right, right now. now. You yeah. understand? Because this is where... I met you because I didn't meet you as an artist. I knew you as an artist, you know what I mean? Because clearly we know the songs. But I met you as a song man. Yeah. You know what I mean? King Emperor song. How did that come about for you? I met King Emperor song in Jane and Finch. Mm-hmm. With my brother called me one day and said, yo, what y'all do? And I'm like, no, no, I'm just up at the house. Because we used to live up in Vaughan, mm-hmm. my cousin's house. And he was like, I come get you a bridge of a little barbecue. So he came to pick me up and he's like, oh, we are going to, uh, I think it was Martin Griffin somewhere. And mm-hmm. he said, me have a one stop to make down a Jane and Finch. Mm-hmm. He said, I'm going to check a bridge in. And he goes to check a bridge in and it turned out it's a bridge in that I knew mm-hmm. from Jamaica. Okay. And that bridge in introduced me to Mr. Fong, King Emperor. Mm-hmm. And from that one introduction, the same day, we exchanged numbers. Yeah. Because my virgin said, yo, Fung, come here. Virgin, bad selector, you know. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, you have a little sound, you know. I would just, and that was it. And what year, what year did you join King Emperor? Oh, 19, 1990, 91. Okay, so from you came here, you're taking care of business, but... The sound thing was still in you somewhere. Yeah. So as soon as there was a a way to actually bring it back up, it came back it up came immediately. Back up. Yeah. Yeah. But all I used to do the sound thing was Monday to Friday, sound thing was off limits for me. Okay. Come here, my son. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Especially when he start kindergarten and all them things. Eh? So weekends, bam. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they have great help from him aunt and him grandmother. So that could have give me time for go play a sound. Mm-hmm. But Monday, you know, I remember Alan Ladd, they used to muster me and say, oh, you know, come on Monday, I'm mm-hmm. on Tuesday night, you're a sound man. I say, because I have a picnic to take care of. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So Monday to Friday, I'll pick him up from school Friday, anything's a go. Yeah. 
But the, the weekly dance thing in the week, no. That wasn't you. Yeah, cause I, I had him on a routine. Bedtime a certain time, story time, homework. You know what I mean? Dinner. I totally get it because even talking about Jane and Finch, because this is where I actually met you because we had a song. I'm pretty sure... We were like, say, like on the seventh floor, yeah, I think and you guys might have been on like the I think fourth or fifth floor, third something floor, like third or fourth floor mm -hmm. in the building, Gosford, I think the yeah, building Gosford. was. Yes, man, that's you meet Freddie with his headphones always. No music playing, you know. We have <laughs> <Catch> it on <laughs> <laughs> one side. But one thing I always remembered about King Emperor song, full of Wayne Wonder dubs. Yeah, when man. it comes to any song you could imagine from Wayne Wonder. King Emperor had that in a gazillion different styles. Yeah, man. We had everything that came out of Penthouse. Mm -hmm. Cause, because I had, I had the link with Wayne same way. Mm -hmm. The link with everybody same way. I used to just link Wayne and say, yo, Wayne. And Wayne would say, yeah, man. Anytime they had that, mm -hmm. that yes. cassette. Man, they must full up at that. And if they know somebody will come up, them get or them mail it. Mm -hmm. Them time Apache Scratchy. He used to fly regular. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, you know, him have him family here, him wife and so. So they used to say, uh, Apache Scratchy was at Penthouse. Yes, yes, yes. Right? So they used to say, give Apache. Mm -hmm. And Apache just link me and say, Freddy, the man didn't give me two of that. Mm -hmm. I would just, we have, we have tunes galore. Yeah. You know, no, I remember, I man, remember. we used to play some serious party in that building there, man. Mm -hmm. All with, um, with Trini sound name, Golden Claw. Yes, Golden Claw, Syndicate. Yeah, um, man. There was no Love Injection. Jackson. There was so much songs around that, that Love era. Child. All of those songs were around those times there. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Ghetto Kian. Mm-hmm. Um, a big sound name, my, um, King, King Hagani. Hagani. Yes, man. You know oh, what I mean? <laughs> hardcore. Yes. With Daddy. Remember, I used to play hardcore. You used to play hardcore? I used to play hardcore too, you know. I were okay. Was this before King Emperor? After before King Emperor. Okay. I used to play hardcore, but the same internal strife thing. Mm -hmm. Because I was linking with Fong them same mm -hmm. way, right? But I was hardcore selector, mm -hmm. right? Because when I used to play hardcore, Fong them used to do the dance same way. Okay. Right. And before we started King Emperor song, we were when I left hardcore, we went to Rough Rider. Yeah. Was that with Double, double Six? six. You were part of that song there too, Yes, Frankie? man. I didn't know that. I remember, I have a flyer to this day. The flyer's actually in a bag right there. And you'd see Rough Rider with Double Six, but I did not realize you because were Because Double home. Six used to mm. live on the same building yeah. that the guy, Peter, that mm. owns the sound, used to mm. live on. Okay. I think Double Six was a couple floors up mm -hmm. from him. And we were one entity mm -hmm. until, you know, you have sound people who own sound, but they don't want to take the next step. Mm -hmm. And we were like, yo, we know we're bad, you know. Yeah. So what I say, yeah, yeah, me. As of now, a king emperor, you know. Yeah. Because we have build the dub box. Mm -hmm. We have get the dub them from we and we have, we have buy record. The record shop in a Jane and Finch beside yes. the McDonald's. Yes, right there. So we go. We used to buy the Italian guy, of course. We used to call him and say, yo, save two or three of mm -hmm. everything we come in. Mm -hmm. And when we go there, we we'll just play and listen. I would say, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this. Mm -hmm. I would start build the sound. And they would just say, you know what? King emperor. Yeah. Did Double Six come to King Emperor with you too? No. Okay, he just stayed it's, Rough Rider and then... And, yeah, and then they started um, Super, Super Fresh. Fresh. Yeah. That, I didn't know that part of the journey there. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. That's crazy right there still. Okay, you're doing your stuff now. So then now, how long did it take between playing sound to now getting into promotions? Not long, you know. Yeah. Not long because my son... And at the time lived at Connection. Yes. And you know, what a barbecue skin mm -hmm. around them time there. And you know, her husband then, you know, I don't, I don't want to really call him name, mm -hmm. he used to keep a lot of barbecues around the back there. Yeah. And he used to all as I said, yo, family, bring in the sound. King Emperor, we are play all these barbecue and I play all these barbecue. Mm -hmm. And then one day I, I, I said to her, Tracy, um, me can use your backyard and keep a barbecue? Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah. That's how I started promoting mm. from a barbecue yeah. in that little backyard. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And it was a success. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Them time you could have buy a beer for $2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, all right. Okay, so you started off doing like That's ba- parties, backyard barbecue. Backyard, backyard barbecue. Mm-hmm. So then when did you graduate from that to now the concerts? To be honest with you, you know, a friend of mine, boy, a lot of friends I have passed off, you know, mm-hmm. rest in peace. He came to me and he said, yo, I'm sit down on a piece of money, you know, and I really want to keep a show. Mm-hmm. And I say, what do you have in mind? And he told me his idea. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, give me a day or two. Let me sit down and, you know. And I went over it, I went over it. And I called him back and I said, yeah, man, it can work, you know. Because I had the link with the artist in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. So the price that I can get the artist for, mm-hmm. it would be more if you link them. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, yeah, hear me? You just take care of everything. Mm-hmm. So I had to go out there and find the banquet hall. Find the staging and lighting, mm-hmm. find the security. Them time they know nothing about this thing, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I did it. Yeah. And one thing I learned, I always say there's a difference between a promoter mm-hmm. and an event planner. You understand completely. Completely different. different mm-hmm. Right? Because getting a hall and then going to the hall, mm-hmm. looking and say, okay. Where am I going to put the stage? I mm-hmm. need a section for this. I need a section. And if the sound goes there, so, you know, it might play out a phase. Bang, bang, four walls, boom, boom. You have to think about all these things. Yeah. And it was a huge success at Shivani Banquet Hall. Shivani, who was, who was on that show there? We and Wanda, mm-hmm. Baby Sham, and Professor Nuts. Okay. What year was this? This was 19... Oh, God. When was it? I don't remember, you know. Yeah. Don't remember. But that was the first big so event. We're probably talking 90, between two and four. Yeah, 90, because. Two, three, four. The funny thing is, from the backyard barbecues, we start the house party. Mm-hmm. And one and two party, like a club 702, and, mm-hmm. you know. But something panda scale, yeah. that was the first thing. Yeah. When I have to deal with Metro Toronto Police and immigration, because I, I went through and I did all the immigration filing and mm-hmm. I registered my company, licensed my company, doing everything myself. Mm-hmm. Here, airplane ticket, everything. Renting vehicles to pick up artists. And I teach myself to do all of that. Mm-hmm. Because at this time, remember, there's no internet. There's promoters around, yes, but unless you're in that circle, circle. with them, you got to nah, figure no, it out no, on no. your own. You know? Yeah. And one of my things that helped me through that process was I went to Travis Institute. Okay, so you still took that, that production engineering yeah. that serious? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I used to watch the time from class, mm-hmm. and I had this lady in the building that used to pick up my son from school, and I made us hop on the train, Kennedy subway, jump mm-hmm. in my car, whoop, pick up my son. Yeah. He jumped in my school the next morning, me going to school. Mm-hmm. Because I was doing production, mm. engineering, artist management. Yeah. I used to do, um, what do I call it, um, publishing. Everything that, that's behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I met a lady through that mm-hmm. program. A white, this white lady, she taught me about filing a work permit. Yeah. The LMO and all those LMO, stuff. Yeah. All those things. And I'm like, whoa, yeah. Because mm-hmm. that was the most important thing, you know. Because back in the days, they say artists not come. People, oh, I'm pay my money, artists. Yeah. Once you get that letter mm-hmm. that says, you know, mm-hmm. you know you're good. Crazy. The artists just buy plane ticket and artists yeah. come. So the first one was clearly back back to the friends would be Wayne Wonder, Wayne Wonder Professor Nuts. Nuts. And Baby Sham is a new artist this time here, no? He knew, but he was the hottest thing. Mm-hmm. Hottest. And it's so funny. When I planned that show, people mm-hmm. were saying, Oh, Professor Nuts, he not fit a billion. I said, no, 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 no. no. Mm-hmm. Professor Nuts is the bridge between a certain generation yes. and the Baby Sham generation. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at things, For you sure. know. Right? And because I had a... A, a relationship I knew nuts 
from back then, from you okay. ride them like under 50, we have the big flare upon it. So when I ride up, when I'm coming towards it, it looks like it's a ninja bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when I pull up, it's like under 50. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know? So he's, he's, he's funny on record and also in person. That's so naturally who naturally he is. Naturally who he is. Yeah. Some of us say, yo, nuts. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a success. That and that was... launched me into mm-hmm. promoting concerts. Yeah. What was, give me a couple more of your big events that you did in the city. Wow. Well, uh, mm-hmm. We did. I, don't, I have a, a, I would say, I call him Big Brother. Yeah. Right? My partner in crime. Mm-hmm. Alpha One Entertainment, Crosby. Big up yourself, Crosby. Mm-hmm. We did Ken Booth. We brought Ken Booth. Yeah. We brought Greg Isaacs. We brought John Holt. We okay. brought Freddie McGregor. Mm-hmm. We brought Mikey Spice. We bring Loss. Who else we bring? We bring Buju. You brought, okay, because remember, you had met Bojo from Jamaica, but he didn't really pop off until you were in Canada. Yeah. All right. Do you remember this Bojo show that you did? Yes, man. Up at Luxor. Dufferin. Yes, Dufferin and Finch there? Our skills yeah, type of area? Yeah, area. Yes. Uh, no, close to the Allen Road. Yes, yes, yes. It's that way there. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Tell me about that show there. That show was Bojo Bantan, mm-hmm. Winnie Wanda. Mm-hmm. A bridging of ours who was singing back then named Weekend. Mm. And Gregory Isaacs was supposed to be on that show. Yeah. But for some reason, when I did all the paperwork for the work permits, Gregory Isaac did not turn up to the embassy for his interview. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So he was a no-go. Yeah. And a lot of people thought, because Gregory was not coming, the turnout was not going to be that great mm-hmm. and it's so ironic the night of the event this Caucasian lady she came to the venue and she wanted to speak to the promoter mm-hmm. security called me to the front and she was saying she bought her ticket already and she was told Greg Razak is not on the bill mm-hmm. and she wanted a refund because she was just there to see Greg Razak mm-hmm. and I'm like I have no issue with that was $40 for the ticket then back then. And mm-hmm. I gave her back her $40. Mm-hmm. And I also offered her, she can stay for the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I just think as a, a promoter, mm-hmm. sometimes you have to learn how to make the people who make you feel that their money is well spent, mm-hmm. or even if they don't spend the money, that they are appreciated. Because I learned this at Travis mm-hmm. from a, uh, a teacher. He said, when you're doing an event, mm-hmm. he said, when you're doing an event, who is the star? And I remember people saying, oh, um, the artist. Oh, the this, the that. He said, mm-hmm. no. The people who are spending the money coming in. Mm-hmm. The promoter is the employer, mm-hmm. the artist, the sound man, the people in the bar, the security, they are the employees. Mm-hmm. So we have to stage this event to please the star. Who is the star? The man who pay money come in. Mm-hmm. Me at the star, if me not pay my money, everything flap. Yeah. Keep that in mind and treat everybody the same way. You'll be successful. You'll be good. Crazy. Were you part of the first time Bojo came here or that was in you? That was the first... Big show. For Bojo. For Bojo coming. That was, this, that was even the second show in that venue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The first show in that venue was Sanchez, Spraga, Spraga Roots. I think that was Sanchez, Coco T, and, and someone else. Probably like a lady. Sorry. Something that was totally different, but I yeah. know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I linked Spraga, and Spraga linked me to the venue. Because yeah. Spraga go back from here to have days at Jamaica. Okay. And that was Bojo, like, that show was the big thing for Bojo. Well, I'm, I'm talking about, till I'm late to rest, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, that was the, that was, that showed it big. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Big. Give me another 
big show that you remember doing also? Freddie Mercury got 48 when he was celebrating his 48th year in music and he was doing the world tour. Yeah. We got that date. Okay. In Toronto. Mm -hmm. That's why to this day, Freddie Mercury always looked at me and said, I, I remember the first time I met him at the airport when he came. Mm -hmm. Like, I met him in Jamaica, but when, he, when I brought him and I went to the airport to pick him up, mm -hmm. he came out and he's like, you mean to tell me, say, all the time, me depend on phone, I deal with you. Me never know, says, I you, me I deal with. <laughs> 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 and he was like, me impress. Mm -hmm. I've done thousands of shows around the world. I'm not a lie. Mm -hmm. From day one to now, you have not let me down. And that's when I met Dalton, which is Cleavy's brother. Mm -hmm. Like, I know of Dalton, but I've never met him. He was the guitar player. Yeah, but he was also Freddie McGregor's musical director. Yes, that was it. Yes, yes, yes. Right? And Dalton was saying, yo, youth, your thing, your thing set. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Freddie McGregor fought yet. And then we had that big press conference for him at Club Paradise. For Freddie McGregor? Yeah, we had a media day. Mm -hmm. That was like the first time that was being done like in a reggae dance hall setting. Mm -hmm. Like I spoke to Larry at Paradise and we booked Paradise mm -hmm. and we had a media day. When I'm talking a media day, we had people from, we had Master T from Much Music. Like there was so much media. It was Freddie McGregor. It was that, remember the world tour, you know? And that I have pictures. Enough time I look back at them pictures and I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, and that's when I first met um, the genius. Okay, was his son. Then? Okay. He he came up on that he show. He came up for that show, but he was 14 years old. <laughs> and uh, Freddie asked me, Freddie's like, yo, can you get him the work permit? Mm -hmm. I'll take care of his ticket. Mm -hmm. I said, Freddie, I can get him the work permit, but I'm going to be the person responsible for him. Because he's Cause I'm a child. Because he's a child. Mm -hmm. And Freddie's like, fine. That's how I met, met him. And that's how I met um, Chico. Ch Chino. Chino. Yeah. He came up to, and the sister, his sister. Um, what's her name? Yasima she Bed? Shima? Shima. Yeah. Yeah. That, because they were all celebrating with their dad. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, man. And then I found out that he lived... Where he lives in Florida, mm -hmm. he lives a couple of streets from my sister. And my sister, ex-husband, mm -hmm. you know, well, them time, him and my sister was together. Mm -hmm. Him and Freddie, because I'm a race ass man. Yeah. Him and Freddie tight. So the link just get kind of, you know. <laughs> Crazy. He did a lot, of, a lot of amazing stuff in promotion. One show, tell me one show that never happened. It, it didn't matter what you did, this it could not happen. It's either you had three artists and one showed up. Something your most disastrous promotion that you put on. My most disastrous. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Not a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe one or two. Yeah. One. Mm -hmm. I, I would say one. Which one was that? It wasn't even a show. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a show. It was a dance. Mm -hmm. It was um, Soul to Soul. Mm -hmm. It was Soul to Soul. Where my brother has this party that he keeps in New York mm -hmm. called Soul to Soul. Where only thing plays is slow music. From start to end. Mm -hmm. He's been doing it now, I think, what, 14, 15 years running? Okay. Yeah. And I decided I'm going to do it here. And me and my, my partner, Crosby. And we got a banquet hall. I can't remember the name of it. It was across from... From JCA. Okay, so it was off of Arrow Road. Yeah, there. it was on Arrow Road across the street from JCA. Mm -hmm. I think it's a church now, African church. Okay. And everything was set. It was Glamour Wayne, um, Rosa, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And everything was booked, everything set. And the banquet hall, they, there was issues with their lease and all this thing that they didn't disclose to us. Mm -hmm. And the week before the event, they got shut down. And they didn't say, they didn't tell us nothing. Mm. We went through hell to get back the money, the deposit. Yeah. 
right? And then we decided to put it at a little club down at Finch and 27 there, you know, and it flopped. Yeah. Because it went from the big banquet hall yeah. to now this club. And all the tickets that were pre-sold, mm-hmm. people take by the money. Because yeah. me, I have this belief, you know, me not believe say for hide things. Because I went on radio yeah. and I said, this is what happened. So go back and get a refund, blah, blah, blah. And people go back and get their money. Mm-hmm. Even with the Buju Gregory show, right? Even with the King Jammies. Because I brought King Jammies and Black Scorpio. That was your dance bus? Yeah. The Jammies and Scorpio. It was somewhere. Pine Valley. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't realize that was, you know, Freddy. Yes, man. Mm-hmm. Bonnie General and Junior Cat. Mm-hmm. And when that dance was supposed to happen, there was some mix-up with the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the police records. Mm-hmm. They didn't send them to the embassy in time. Mm-hmm. So no visas or work print were approved. Hmm. So I had to say, okay, what am I going to do? I was on the phone with King Jamis, and I said, Jamis, you know what? I'm going to go on radio. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to let the people know what happened, and we are going to push back the dance a week and Jamie said, when you go to the radio station, call me and I'll come and hear to. Okay. So I did that with Natty B and Bigan, Richard Banton and King Turbo, all of them, you know. Mm-hmm. I would just make the people them know. Said, this is what happened. And Jamie said, yeah, you know, the promoter and all I to know, this is what happened, ABCDFG. And we moved the dance a week. Mm-hmm. And the dance still go on. Classic dance. You have to just be upfront with people. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter and tell, tell lie. Just say, yo, I'm the promoter and this will happen, you know. Or if I hear a mistake, I say, I mess up, mm-hmm. you know, get back on a refund and we'll move on. As simple as that. Simple as that. Because I know when it came to those penthouse, Dave Kelly, Madhouse artists, one time you had that on. Luck. Super smash, boss. Yeah, man. From oh. Ali Cat, Frisco Kid, Frankie Sly, like name, like... It's just one family. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who brought them to Toronto. Mm-hmm. From before them leave Jamaica, they might call me. Yo, Freddy, mm-hmm. we are come up, you know, Friday. I'm going to say, all right, airport. It never matter who brought them here. And me, I got the airport to pick them up. Mm-hmm. Them now drive with the promoter. Them and the promoter will say, yo, I'm, I'm a color, I move. Because one thing they used to always say is, they know I am not going to take them into arms way. Got you. So I'm me and them are real. Because as you said, I think just just now, you I think you were really the one to introduce Baby Sham into the Canadian market. Yeah, man, I me first bring Sham come here. Mm-hmm. Before I even brought Sham here, I me promote him to them. Mm-hmm. Well, as soon as the song they mix and master, mm-hmm. them send them. Me get the tune them, right? And he would do the dub plate them for we. Mm-hmm. So we are beat the dubs from King Emperor Sound. Mm-hmm. I may ask, give the tune them to come into the radio station and certain sound man. You had a good link with King Turbo at that time there too. You, yes, man. When it came to especially the dub sessions and stuff like that, bro, Freddy, when you're here, it's Turbo that you're linked with and then that's how whoever's going to get around yeah, from man. there. Because you see, Ricky, me and Ricky had a good relationship because I met Ricky through my brother. Okay. Right, I remember my brother was going to some party and he said, yo, me can't come pick you up, you know. But me, I send a virgin come pick you up. Mm-hmm. And when the person buzzed me and I go downstairs, it was Ricky. Mm-hmm. The first time I meet Ricky. And we turned friends. And it turned out that I went to New York and I was at my sister's house and I was standing up on the porch and I looked down the block, like two houses down. I said, Ricky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yo. And he's like, yo, we are doing that. I said, what you are doing that? Mm-hmm. In family, they live two houses from my sister. You know? So it was just that a connection up to this day, me and him still. Mm. You know, I haven't seen him in a while, but big up yourself, Ricky. Yeah. You know, big up the whole King Turbo family. You know, hand you everybody. And while you were promoting, you were still playing song, or the song was part of the what you were doing, or you were not directly still playing at this time? No, without, I was still playing the song, mm-hmm. but it was separate. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I deliberately kept it separate, mm-hmm. right? Because a lot of things that I did. I did not book King Emperor okay. on it because 
I was looking at it like they, we don't need to be on it because back then we had a name. Mm -hmm. We had a name. So I used to book. I used to, I booked King Turbo, you know. Um, what is the song name again? Oh, God. Rufus and Richie used to play there. Soulville. Soulville, yep. You know, I, I give other song. Let them come showcase them thing. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? We can enjoy ourselves tonight. Yeah. You know, so I kept it separate. Mm -hmm. You know, until, you know, certain little things went down and, you know, with, you know, you know, with King Emperor. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of what? As they would have said, park the sound. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want the sound to park. But I just had to go by the wish of his brother, you know? Which was what we're talking about here was the passing of phone. Yeah, the passing of phone. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace, my brother. Mm -hmm. And it's just so ironic, you know, it's very ironic. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, made it 20 years. 20 years already? 20 years yeah? since he passed. And his nephew mm -hmm. got killed on the 20th anniversary in Scarborough. So it was like, you know, when he got killed, when mm -hmm. Fung got killed, right, in, in Jena Finch Day, mm -hmm. you know, it was like a, it, 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 it come in like the music just left with soul. Yeah. You know, because Fung was the, the vibes man, like the man, the, mm -hmm. you know, and may I tell you, it touched a lot of, it, uh, Beanie Man, Weenie Wanda, everybody from, when them ear man, it was like, yo, because mm -hmm. he was love, may I tell you. Love every artist, every soul man, everybody will come to Toronto mm -hmm. will meet this youth. I say, yo, and what, what made it special too? He was Guyanese. Yes. He was not Jamaican. Mm -hmm. And the knowledge that he had for the music. Mm -hmm. And when he might tell you about some heart, he, he remind me of David Radigan. Mm -hmm. Them man they not just play the music. Study. Them study the music. Mm -hmm. That's what draw me to him, you know. Because I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. my brother, yo, I'm talk so. Mm -hmm. And the man say, my guy and his man. But the knowledge we have of the music, I mm -hmm. said, no, man, me and this man can be friends. Yeah. And we, we became friends. Hmm. Crazy, yeah. No, I remember when that happened. That was that was a big thing, especially if you were in Jane and Finch at time, you're in the song world. So it touched all of us at that yeah, time. Yeah, man. You understand? Yeah, man. A lot of like, I, like there was so much selectors from East, West. Um, so what a guy that sound from Hamilton. Um, King Atani. King Atani. All them man. Like, mm -hmm. they, they, they just couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Fung? Mm -hmm. Like, you know? But, you know, rest in peace, my friend. It's just one of those things yeah, here. Man. You know what I mean? Okay, that was song. That's what part the song. Now, with even promotion, when did you decide to really back off a promotion because I know one time you were doing a lot of shows dances and stuff uh, then you really decided to pull back a bit when was that to be honest with you the the atmosphere in Toronto got to a point mm -hmm. where it was like there was no respect mm -hmm. for the craft you know, and mm -hmm. I said to myself, I don't really want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was like the Olympics. And everybody had to, who can go the fastest, who can do this and too much. It was just too crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, and then coupled with the, the lack of venues, you know, and a lot of people just refuse to take responsibility that mm -hmm. we played a part in us not having venues. Of course. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, do I want to be a part of this anymore? Because mm -hmm. to me, you know, some people was just doing it, I guess, for say, yeah, me do the dance thing. Yeah, what do you mean? I'm my thing. Okay, but... Uh, this is just my belief. Mm -hmm. I believe, you know, if you're doing anything that relates to music, you should also be trying to grow mm -hmm. the business and grow the business beyond our demographic. Mm -hmm. That wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. And me never want, you know, 
tussling with another promoter about venue and 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 yo, if you have a book a song there and 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 don't play for him and mm, no, I'm not depend on that. Cause I'm from an era where there was unity, mm-hmm. mutual respect. You know, nowadays we see promoter, we don't like that boy there, we don't like someone, we don't like that man there, and yeah. you know, I'm never for that. When you seen that started to happen in the business, you decided this isn't really for me. Let me just pull back a bit. Yeah, me just say you know, let me just pull back, mm-hmm. you know. But I was still doing my promotion in terms of music mm-hmm. because me, me I promote new songs. For Baby Sham, Beanie Wanda, like I know, I have a great relationship with with um Banky. Banky managed Cabra, mm-hmm. um, used to manage Cabra. Mm-hmm. Now my bank manage Bounty Killer. Mm-hmm. You know, them man they send me stuff, promote me, 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 me send stuff all over the world. Mm-hmm. Even now nah, I sell out my friend them. You know me, I promote them thing there in, from Canada. I, I send them out. Banky send them okay. to me and me I do my thing same way. Mm-hmm. My latest thing when I shot out with you was just yesterday from my niece. Mm-hmm. Big up yourself, Pampite. She sent me a new bad song. I'm like, you know. That's your family too? Yes, man. Mm-hmm. That's my big brother daughter. Okay. Yes, man. So it's something that's in the family. It runs yeah, in man. the family. And it's so funny. Her brother mm-hmm. that lives in the US, my my, my, my nephew, mm-hmm. him is a selector too. Okay. And him DJ to like him sister. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? But she actually get the DJ thing from Fear Mother, you know. Because Fear Mother, the name Bantan, you know. We say DJ upon a song named Qualitex, you know. With what? chicken, chick, we name chicken arc. Chicken chess and arc. Uh, okay. And them and Nada ranking and them, yeah. Monday, you know. She was a bad DJ, you know. Pampute's mother. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Bad DJ. Her man. name was what? Bantan. Boss. Yeah. Bad DJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And that's where it came from. So I think she get that. That jeans there from Armada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. That's wild there. Yeah. Big up my niece. I love her, man. Enough work permit I'm file for her. Yeah. Other people are bringing her up on me do I work permit them. Mm-hmm. No, I know when it came, listen, when it came to that work permit thing, you were one of the early people yes, man. in on that. You know what I mean? It would be a you, a fabo. Like that type of you guys were the early people yeah, in man. that type of Lady thing. Lady Christine, big up yes. yourself. Yes, yes, yes. You know what, you know yeah, what I man. mean? You guys were the pioneers with that. Out of all your musical stuff you did from being a rapper to producing to to promoting everything, what is your what stands out most to you? What was one memory out of all of this that would live in your heart and your mind forever? Hmm. Living in my heart forever. Mm-hmm. Is when my son when my son was in Louisiana. Mm-hmm going to college he sent me a video mm-hmm. and he said dad this is me just bouncing some easy tunes mm-hmm. and he was playing some sizzler mm-hmm. and some um what's his name again um ibamar yeah and them artists and he had his mixing console in the in purchase in mixing con- everything mm-hmm. right in, but then he used to call himself dj swipe Oh, okay. Right? And I'm like, whoa, all these years, I never used to play any derogatory music around my son. Mm-hmm. Right? And I'm looking at the video and I'm like, yeah, I feel good. Mm-hmm. Out of everything I ever do. Right? From the decision to just step aside and take care of my youth and I say, look there. Mm-hmm. I'm a play music where me exposed to him from him at like two year old. That positive energy, mm-hmm. you know. And me say, yeah, yes, my son, got you, right. I know it's so funny as me say, as me talk about him. Mm-hmm. See Ricky Chupa, <laughs> and Ricky Chupa tell my son say, no nah, man, with swipe, you can't name swipe. <laughs> 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 yeah. No nah, man, that's for that man. You can't name swipe. Where you name? He said, Kavan. He said, yeah, man, you name I tell you, DJ name, man. Mm-hmm. DJ Kavan. Swipe. That sounds like you're a thief, something. Yeah. <laughs> and he just said, okay. Mm-hmm. I Ricky Chupa, yeah. change him name. And I get whoop at drops fee when he start playing on the college circuit, you know. Sprague mm-hmm. Benz, everybody get drops fee. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, man. Crazy, crazy. 2021 now. Been chilling for a bit. What's next for Freddy? What do you want to explore? Where is your aspiration there in the music business, if any at all? You know, to be honest with you, the pandemic and the, I would say, the, 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 the downward spiral of in reggae, dancehall, entertainment in the GTA, mm -hmm. it kind of lit a fire in me if you say, no, man, we need to do something. Yeah. So for like two years, I've been on the drawing board. Yeah. And I have my, I have my thing planned. It's just the pandemic came and just set it back because mm. it was in motion. Yeah. It was in motion. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's still in motion. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time because I realized that there is a market there for certain kind of music. Mm -hmm. There's a market for a certain kind of artists. And there's a market for a certain kind of selectors. Aye. That's not... It's tapped into, but it's like, eh, people are dibble dibble in it, but not... There's no big focus on it to say... Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? So, that's where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at right now. Definitely. Before I get your order, is there anybody you want to big up? Anything you want to say? Anything right now? The floor is yours. Whoa, so much people, you know. Starting off with yourself, you know. Enough big up respect, yeah, big up more. to have me sitting in this chair, mm -hmm. you know. And I want to say enough respect to we any wonder. Mm -hmm. Seeing enough respect to the whole clique I'm talking about from Baby Sham, Ali Kiat, Frisco Kid, Lady Sa. You know, big up my cousin, he messaged me this morning, you know, he's my lady's our manager now. Okay. Two of them is in the church. Free, um, Scoffrey. Okay. You know, Scoffrey yeah. is the monks, Praga Benz and mm -hmm. all, you know. Big him up, you know, big up Bujo. Big up my son, big up wifey. Big up yourself. Big up the girls, them, Tasia, Shanice. Big up my brother and sister, them. And in Toronto, every sound man out there. Every sound man. I want to take this thing serious. You know? Mm -hmm. I know, say, Someone will take it really, really serious. But take it to another level. Mm -hmm. Don't just play music, teach. See? I want to big up also King Jammies. Mm. Learn a lot from you. And I owe you a call, a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was going to call you back, but I'm going to call you. Big up King Jammies. Mm -hmm. Right? Also big up Banky. See? And big up Jigzy from Rootsman. Mm. Big up yourself. Because. And it I see Jigsy ask him who was the first person to put him around a sound. Yeah. Me put him around a sound, put mm -hmm. him to stand up on a crate around yeah. King Emperor Sound. And from there, Roots Man. Yeah. You understand what I mean? So there's a lot of people, if I don't call your name, there's no sound on a day in my heart. Picture mm -hmm. Man lied, mm -hmm. Ivan, you know, aka Ivan Gangsta, big up on himself, big up Nikki, I, big up Crosby, big up Father Rosa, mm -hmm. seen, big up Danny. Oh God, there's so much people for big up. There's a lot. Yeah. See, you know what? Moa said enough respect to Tanya and, and Father Ramsey family. Big up on herself. Cause we lose a great man. Mm -hmm. See? And big up my friend Liz. Cause our years, you know, me and Liz now start now in our years, you know. We are we back when, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, some people think we just know Liz. No man, we know Liz long time. Big up yourself, Liz. Long time. Are you on social media, or Facebook, Instagram, or anything where they can check yeah, you out? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Me use my real name, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, Devon Henry, Freddie Wow, mm -hmm. and both. But, you know, especially Facebook, we do it for the. Just staying in touch yeah. with family and friends and all my peeps, them from school, because we're a school group. And, okay. You know, and there are certain things where. The pandemic just set me back. We were going to do certain things to benefit the school back in Jamaica. But as soon as things open up, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to start back everything. You know, so. And everybody does. It's all about love. Because this pandemic just come show us, say, no, no, we're not bigger than life. You know, so. Just show love. If you step on a man's shoes, just say, sorry, my boss. And if you tell her sorry, you just say, everything cool. Now, but I screw him, step on your Gucci shoes. 
You know what I mean? I mean, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. You know, I'm not going to have you in here and not ask for your verse out of it's over now. <laughs> All right? I need that. That's going to, what we're going to use it, and I'm going to give you the outro and get you out of here. So right now, the floor is here. I need that verse, Freddy. Oh, that verse, man. Mm-hmm. That verse took me like three minutes to write. Yeah. Pick <laughs> off the bat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't need to brag, I don't need to post because you are the girl that I love the most. I love you from pillow, I love you to post, but now that you're gone, there's no need to toast. <laughs> Bam. Classical. And we ain't the one that was choppy. Then no matter what you do, girl, it's over now. You want me to make it up to you, but it's over now. And all the times we shared, it's over now. Girl, it's over now. Don't you know? <laughs> wow, Freddy. Even talking about Wayne, I seen that you got a painting the other day. Yes. With you and Wayne, Friends for Life. Yeah, that painting actually, you know, mm-hmm. my dad passed away in February mm-hmm. of this year. Condolences. Yeah, thanks. Mm-hmm. And my mom passed away 2008. Mm-hmm. And we have a friend, a mutual friend that we grew up together mm-hmm. in Dunkirk. He lives in the U.S. now. He does painting. He has a class that he teaches kids painting and all that. And the man just, we're friends on social media, and, you know. Mm-hmm. The man just linked me and said, yo, Bertrin, yo, your, well, your father and your parents used to take care of all of us. And he just did the painting. Yeah. And he had a time-lapse video of when he started it. Okay. And he, he sent it to me. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yo, and because, you know, I work, you know, for FedEx, mm-hmm. I just say, yo, give him my account. And he said, yo, may I ship it? And when he shipped the painting of my parents mm-hmm. and I opened the package, there was two paintings in it. So I linked him and he goes, that's the surprise. <laughs> he painted, yeah. he went on my Facebook thing and he mm-hmm. took the picture of me and Wayne. Yeah. And he painted that one. Him say, friends for life. Mm-hmm. And I have them in my living room. Yeah. And actually, I am talking to someone now who's going to copy the one with Wayne, same size, and I'm going to ship it to him. Big yeah, year. That's how that picture came yeah. about. Because he was just doing one with my parents. Mm-hmm. Right? And then he decided, nah, man. I have to do one for him and Wayne. Mm-hmm. And he just did it and sent it. Crazy. Listen, Freddy, it's because of that picture I seen on social media that just jogged my memory. I said, yo, I need to talk to Freddy. You understand? Because, again, you took care of me throughout my career. So I said, listen, I'm in a position now. Now is this is my gift from me to you. Say, hey, you know what? Come. Tell your story. You Thank understand? You, because a lot of people know the song. Yeah, that's cool and everything. But they don't really know behind, behind the scenes. And that's what does intrigue me about the music. And I, I was always intrigued about but behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. How do you really make? Yeah. How it start? Mm-hmm. You know, the, the vocals, the this, the that, the that. I was always intrigued by that. Yeah. Always. Today. You know. Freddy, thank you so much for coming through, brother. Yeah, man. Respect, man. Anytime, anytime. And you know what? Mm-hmm. I have to say, your journey, mm-hmm. you need to sit over here <laughs> and we'll get the perfect person to interview you. Yeah. <laughs> because your journey mm-hmm. from when I first met you, mm-hmm. standing up at that Epiphany Club there, you know. them time they never named Epiphany, it named Symphony. Yes. And then the father Rosa run mm-hmm. it. And you sell cassette out of the thing. Mm-hmm. I said, look on a youth, you're a hustle, man. Respect. Mm-hmm. From that to this, mm-hmm. hats off to you, man. Respect. You don't know we live already. Respect. Hurti, thank you so much. Let me give you an outro and get you out of here. Because listen, this conversation, from your mouth, your heart, your mind, how you gave it to us, wicked conversation. I'm happy that you sat down with me today. Thank you. You understand. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusicut.com.